the air. Hello? Hello. Oh, let me turn in my radio. Cool echo, though. Echo. 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 Wow, not bad. Oh, I'm sorry that I came on right after your, uh, your depressed woman was on. Your caller? Why was she crying? She hasn't been able to find someone who's willing to admit that they agree with her that this war is uh, a ghastly disaster and a put-up job. At the moment, uh, her feels very alone and isolated, and uh, she's trying to overcome her alienation. So, uh, See, I, I initially thought that I thought maybe she was depressed because she couldn't guess the secret sound on the Don and Mike show, when in fact it was probably her douchebag hitting the floor. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No, actually, what she heard was you, douchebag. What a brilliant, what a brilliant guy. Hi, 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 hi. Okay. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi. Welcome to our show. Hey, Don and Mike. Or did I not tell a book? It's the Don and Mike show. And they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? When we were on that tarmac today at three hours in New Orleans, <laughs> you might have noticed these guys out there with their rain slickers on. Hi, guys. Let you slide today. They're guiding the jet ski. Based on a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself, a man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul torn apart. Your discretion advised. And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Cascading Cart and all the ships to see. Yeah. Back and refreshed after a brief and delightful eight and a half hour commute. It's Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Thank you, Robbie and hi, and thanks for listening, everybody. Don and Mike show a new episode on this Tuesday. Tuesday. April. Catered. Phone number from anywhere in America, 877-365-3636. Canadians are not welcome to call 800-636-1067. Washington, D.C., 202-432-1067. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Howdy there, Buzz. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. They are the blood welcome. and the pus in the comedy Welcome. Sit. Welcome. 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 Someone called for a doctor? How were the blood and the pus to the comedy zit? And now go high. Now. Lucky you got that open in today at all. <laughs> Lucky? Yeah. Lucky you got a show today. Yeah. And boy. Yeah, we're a little crispy. Bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. And boy, would you guys be pissed if uh, right now uh, it was uh, Joe Ardinger or uh, uh, Rob Spiewak and I on the telephone uh, telling you why we... We we are not here, yeah. but we are here, here gentlemen. now, gentlemen in, in charge. Uh, last night in New Orleans, they had they had some weather come through, mm -hmm. some thunderstorms, spectacular meteorological activity, some uh, as Mike would uh, say, some tornadic, yes. some tornadic activity. Um, as a matter of fact, it was the kind of lightning that goes sideways in the sky. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a lot of that last Chain night, lightning, and it was uh, all night long. Mm -hmm. So. All night. All night. All night. So we uh, we get up very early this morning, 4.30 a.m., in order to beat the crowd to the airport, right. leaving a sporting event, <laughs> in order to catch the first possible plane, we thought, from New Orleans to D.C., <laughs> to be here to do the show for you, our, our beloved audience, because, you know... Without you, we got nothing. Yeah, and it was a wonderful trip to New Orleans. And, uh, you know, we were excited to, to go down there and be there for the Final Four. We had a couple of great shows down there. And we thought, uh, no problema. Now, uh, we do have some stuff from last night and some uh, leftover stuff from the from the weekend that we'll get to. But uh, this is the pressing story, the story of us at the airport today. We arrived there, oh, uh, an hour and a half before the plane is supposed to leave. Right. And we realized that we were there. It's a catch-22, because if you get there a little too late, you're, you're going to be in a security line. It's going to take you an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, but we were, we were all there <laughs> early enough where we had quite a little wait before the guy, the friendly guy, <laughs> got, to, uh, got to the gate destination. Well, here's the dealio. When you, when you, uh, we've gone to enough of these things like Super Bowls where if you wait until... 45 minutes before your plane leaves, right. you get to the airport, and everybody 
every hungover idiot with the Syracuse or sleeping Kansas. on the floor. Right. Yeah, they're they're all trying to get through security at the same time. So we figured out we'd rather get up at 4:30 a.m., get to the airport, be the first guys in line, not worry about it. Well, um, it got time to start boarding the airplane. The airplane was there, and Mike said, "Hey, I've noticed that the crew." Is not on on uh, on board. The crew's not around because you know Mike watches for stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. As you know, being semi-phobic, and I'm not as bad as I used to be, but I actually now I study it and I study what's going on. And it's just in, and you know, it was like everybody was there, and the the time had come and gone, and the plane was dark. So they and announced that was my first clue. That's a clue. Then the guy came on the uh, the little PA system, and he announced uh, that because the the weather was bad the night before, baldy the crew. <laughs> The crew that flew into New Orleans was going to fly us out. Uh, they they uh, they got some rule now that pilots are getting drunk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they have a rule that they have to like get eight, nine, ten hours yeah, away from it, something like that. Right. And I guess the you know the time ferry will be like sitting there and and uh, and beware. I think it's all recorded as far as when their plane came in right. and when they fly next, so they really have no choice. And all of this is compounded by the fact that by the time when we got to the airport first thing today, the flight was already 40 minutes later than it was originally scheduled on our ticket. Yeah, because of that. So so we were supposed to leave at 10 minutes after 7 o'clock. And then they moved, it to, seven, they moved it to 7.40. 7.40. And we were, at that point, still rolling with it. Sure. We were fine. We had uh, some coffee, uh, had some fruit. Buzz had a nice bruised banana that he got for free. And uh, <laughs> then it started to get hairy. Yeah. Then the, the bald guy, Baldy. Well, Baldy, I, I stood in line and I got down to the gate first. I was the very first Excuse one. Me. And, you know, I believe that, that when you're, you, you don't put your luggage down and go sit. If you want to be first in line for something and you're waiting for like a gate attendant to come down there, you stand. And so I stood the whole time waiting for Baldy, hopefully to get my, my ticket and a, and a window seat, which is my thing, you know, my, my scared flying thing. I like to be pressed up against the window with my white knuckles. That's the way I like to fly. And so I said, uh, uh, window seat if possible. Not possible. Uh, and he handed me my my, my boarding pass. I, that That's how long the exchange lasted. And, uh, it, it, you know, I just... Maybe it's because of the uh, the fact that I was awakened in the hotel at uh, at quarter of two mm. by a guy banging on the door going, housekeeping, now, now. housekeeping, you wanted the iron? <laughs> now we no! know. We normally have a very nice perk where we fly first class. But because first class was sold out, you know, the choice was either stay another day, you know, and not give you guys a show. And, and I'm just one, glad Michael Wilbon was comfortable. At one point, we were actually debating... Well, if Westwood One still has all of the stuff set up at the at the NCAA thing, if the weather's bad, we can just go back there and do the show there. But uh, they they started to tear that place down as we were doing the broadcast <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, they were like, well, there were a piece, a few pieces of wire down there, you know. <laughs> so we uh, we're, we're waiting around, and the sky outside, uh, eight o'clock in the morning, New Orleans time, nine o'clock East Coast time, was pitch black. There was big, big, big bolt of lightning. It was, and a, it was really, it started rock and rolling all over again in New Orleans. It was ground sheets zero. of wind yep. that you couldn't really tell unless you looked at one of the airplanes that was parked when you would see the, the just the sheets of wind. And at that point, one of the uh, U.S. Air guys came up to me and said, Hey, we just got a recorded wind gust of 58 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I went, okay. And I purposely said... You see that guy over there? Don't tell him. <laughs> Pointing at me? Yeah, you know, I said, don't tell him. He said, okay, no problem. Yeah. So we're waiting and we're waiting, and finally they announce they're going to board us. This is now an hour after the flight was delayed a half an hour, but still, we're in relatively good spirits. Uh, I was scared. I'll tell you. I mean, I mean it, was, it was just something where... You know, I'm a nervous flyer to start with. When you're walking down the ramp to the air, the airplane, and you can hear the thunder clapping outside, and it's, there's so much electrical storm activity that you're worried about leaning up against the uh, the gate as you're walking down it because you think you're going to be electrocuted. Oh, hold on, before we get to the airport, the, the airplane. Here's the highlight for me this morning. We had a long wait, obviously, to get on this airplane. Very long, and. One at a time, each of us would say, well, i got to go you know, have a nice BM. 
when Charles Broyhill got up to go to the men's room <laughs> to take a nice BM, he brought his portable DVD player in with him. Wow. A move that I really almost wanted to stand up and applaud. <laughs> and uh, the movie was Zoolander. I mean, there he was just, you know... It's like the experienced traveler. Yeah, I mean, it's just man, you, you you just take care of yourself and you do the things you got to do. <laughs> you got to take a dump, so you bring a DVD player in with you. Yeah, moving. So now we're back. We're on the plane, uh, and I'll fess up to this one right away. We were uh, at gate A five, I believe five A, whatever. A five, mm -hmm. gate A five. When I got onto the plane, I thought I was in seat five A. Oh. oh, I forgot about this. So I sat down. <laughs> you, have, you have the greatest facial expressions when this happens. Yeah. Now, this is not first class. This no. is just regular, you know. Coach. Yeah. So we're in 5A, and I got a window seat, and I'm relatively happy, and I've I got myself all nestled in there. I got my book. I was going to wonder, because I was going to say, the guy, you checked in after I did, right, at, at the gate, and I remember I looked over at you, and the first thing that crossed my mind, I said, how the hell did you get a window seat? Well, because I thought the guy had hooked me up because I said, I'm willing to sit on an exit seat, on an exit aisle. Yes. You know, because a lot of times right. you get extra room in that sure. regard. So anyway, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I've got my entire section laid out. i got my Palm Pilot. i got my AOL device. i got my notes for the show. I've got a corner. I'm real happy. <laughs> About 20 minutes later, a woman comes by, and she goes, Excuse me. That's actually a guy that has this little this little mini confrontation with a woman who's sitting in your row over on the far right hand side, and she says, uh, "I'm in 5A," and, and, and he said, "The guy says I'm in 5A," or something like that. One of one of them was in my seat, and they wanted to switch. They could sit by. Well, the you girlfriend. said very loudly, "said Excuse me." My seat is 5A. And at this point, <laughs> the guy's girlfriend reached into my little uh, barf bag thing, that, that little pocket right. in front of you, and she pulled out my ticket, and she said, oh, yes, he is in 5A. Oh. And then I looked closer, and I saw it was gate 5A, but actually seat 9E. <laughs> so, that's when I looked over you, I said, you? And, and Don and I were kind of like lip syncing to one another. I said, is that your seat? And Don goes, because, no. <laughs> you know, at that point, we're thinking maybe you wouldn't have to move. Right? So I did the stand-up thing. You know, I said, hey, I'm very sorry. You know, I'm an idiot. I read the ticket wrong. I'm, I'm four rows back. So the woman sits down. I go four rows back, and I don't have the luxury of an aisle seat or a window seat. I'm in a middle seat. Oh, now, God. Here is where I hope he's listening right now. Right now. Uh, I was in seat 9E. Seated next to me, to my direct right, was a gentleman, first name, I didn't ask his last name, mm -hmm. first name, Derek. Derek was on the aisle? No. Derek Zoolander. Now, <laughs> he was, I, I, I don't want to paint this the wrong way, he was some pleasant, while he was awake for the last five minutes of the flight, he was a pleasant enough fella and even when I said to him, are you from D.C. or Philadelphia? He said, yes, he travels between the two cities. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you ever listen to Don and Mike show? He said, oh, yeah, all the time. I said, great. And I said, <laughs> lied to him. I said, what I'm going to do is ask your name, because when I talk about all the waiting we had to do on the flight, it's good for me to have the name of a, of a guy that was actually on the flight. He said, yeah. Sure. That wasn't the real reason you wanted no, his right. name, right? No. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. And really... This looks like something that belongs on John Hinckley's wall. Uh, every day, as you know, I, I write notes for the show. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten the ramblings and scribblings here yep. uh, about this guy. First off, there's an unwritten rule when you're on an airplane, especially when you're back there riding in the cattle car. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to have the window seat, don't take the armrest that's built into the window and the armrest to your direct left. That's right. This guy had both armrests. So is this guy in the window seat or the aisle seat? The window seat. So he's to your left or right? He's to my right. Okay, so you're okay, so you're okay, you're on the right so side of the plane. He's got both of of the you know the, the armrests. Mm. Now, by the time I sit down, he's already because he smells of booze, Oof. so he must be sleeping one off. He has 
got himself at a, a an angle. If I'm looking at the clock, he's at 10 o'clock. Okay? <laughs> he's facing to the left. He's semi-reclining? Yeah. Oh, his seat is all the way back. Of course it is. He's snoring. He's got the boozy stuff happening. And the problem is, this is where I really got mad at this guy and why I'm bringing this up now. When you're back there, okay, the armrest thing I'll give you, you know, it's maybe it's first come, first go. Yeah, you could, you could probably make an argument for that, but if you've got a window seat, even a big guy, you can jam yourself up against, you know what, especially if you want to, if you want to, Recline and you want to, you can cram yourself up against that that window then okay. and give the give the person next to you plenty of room. But here's the thing, when you're sitting in the seat, the middle seat, the the, the left seat or the right seat, mm -hmm. you've got the thing in front of you, the seat in front of you, you've got the little pouch there and the little phone in the middle, and you have on the bottom where you're supposed to slide in a carry on, there are definite metal bars bars yeah. that like signify. This is where you slide your bag under and where you put your feet under. Mm -hmm. Well, this horse's ass had his legs spread oh. so far over that his foot and the better part of his half were over the metal part in your space. No, this on is no mine. good. This is no good. So I sat down and immediately I started trying to do the thing where I was just nudging his foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nudging his foot, and he would just wake up for a half second and go, <sighs> and then he would go back to sleep. Uh, the waitress came by at one point, and she said to me, "You were going to have to put because I had my, you know, my purse, my satchel." She said, "You're going to have to put that in the seat, uh, you know, in front of you, under the I'll, seat in front of you, under the seat." I said, "I can't because there's no room because this guy's leg is there." And she said, sir, sir, sir. And the guy was just... Was he just a total ass? Yeah, he was out of it. Not even now, paying attention to anybody. I don't know if he was if he was pretending to be sleeping or if he was, you know, actually passed out or whatever. She finally said to me, just hold it in your lap. Because he wasn't budging. She didn't want to reach over and, and right. grab onto the guy's right. leg. So... <laughs> We're on the tarmac for... Did you feel like maybe giving him an elbow at that point? Yeah. He's sleepy, so let's go ahead and bend this federal regulation. <laughs> He's sleepy. <laughs> we, after waiting inside the terminal for an hour and a half, we sat on the tarmac for another hour and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a matter of fact, we had had a plan, Mike and I had a plan, that if by 12.15 East Coast time, the plane hadn't moved... Mm -hmm. We were just going to get off the plane. Because mm -hmm. we know the deal. Once they shut the door, yeah, then you're a real prisoner. Mm -hmm. And they move you out, on, and, they, and you start taxiing to take off, right. allegedly. Off. Uh, then you're stuck. Right. And Rob and I know that. We were on a plane a couple of years ago where we had to sit for five hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they had pushed us out. You know, in order to get... Here's how they work it. They say it's an on-time takeoff. If they push away right from the gate on time, mm -hmm. so and can I throw in my little two cents here? When we finally did get going, for my money, really, the, the rich guy private jets, let them wait a little bit, okay? You got commercial flights that were supposed to leave at ten after seven. Hundreds of people. It's ten forty-five mm -hmm. or whatever time it is, mm -hmm. or ten fifty, ten of eleven, and and I'm looking at all these private jets, private jet after private jet, which I guess is. Johnny Corporation coming in for the final four there, but man, I was I got I had a great view of this right out of my window, and I because they made a big deal, didn't they? Like we were number three. Well, the guy here's, off. Mm -hmm. here's where the pilot worried me. At first, he got on and he said, "Hi, you know, this is uh, Johnny. I'm not drunk, pilot, and I'll be honest with you. Right now, the ramp is closed, and we're not going to push away because if we push away, you guys are going to be stuck on the airplane." Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to push away until I'm assured mm -hmm. that we've been given clearance to take off. Right. Then he comes on an hour later and says, okay, we're number three for takeoff. Uh, but the sequencing that they're doing because of the incredibly severe weather around New Orleans, 
What did he say? What was the word he used as the far spacing, as the delay? Spacing he said the they're doing off? spacing and we should have significant delays. Yeah. Right. This is now, he's saying, we are going to take off. We're number three for takeoff, but the delays will be significant. significant. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I see my man work his magic. My man flying coach, mm -hmm. not flying first class, flying coach. I see my man, Mike, my man, mm -hmm. working his magic with the waitress. <laughs> and she brings him over because outside, and I can't see the window, but I can see the lightning and I can hear the rain hitting mm -hmm. the side of, of, the, of the airplane. Right. I know that it's a mess outside. And I know Mike can see out the window. I see her come over. With the double Bloody Mary. <laughs> I don't do that. I mean, you know what? In the morning, I do not. I rarely do that. Not on a work morning. Not on a work morning. That is. That might be one of the first times ever I that I've so. done that on a work morning. And you know what? I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't mind telling you. And you know what? Really, she was. She was terrific. The whole. I thought the whole flight crew on that plane, under very adverse circumstances, mm -hmm. they were. They, I don't think they could have been nicer. Right. And uh, and maybe Rob's going to contradict. Me. Well, they might have wanted to. Uh... Fasten the cabinet that held the wine bottles during landing. Oh, yes. Oh, really? Yeah, when we landed, uh, wine bottles, juice cans, everything went flying. The, the flight attendants hadn't strapped well, that stuff down. Well, they were still nice. That's yeah. the thing. They, they were nice. Yes. They were nice. Oh, nice. Nice and wet. And here's how you know. Nice! 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 <laughs> nice. Here's how you know they were nice. Nice! Uh, she said to me, I had to just like a racehorse. Because I, yeah. I get in this thing in the morning, I get my... Slim fast, a cup of coffee. I have like a quart of water, and right. then I gotta, I gotta just pee like nobody's business. Sure. I said to her, "Can I go up up there? Because I was like five rows away from first class, mm -hmm. and the the bathroom for regular folk like ourselves was a mile away. All the way yeah, it's, it's all about you know. And, and he had just said we're uh, in ten within ten minutes. We got that thirty minute restriction out of Washington where you have to sit down. So you you got up and asked to use that, and I, follow, I actually followed you up there. And she said, "Sure." Now she didn't have a problem, but some dick who was and I loved doing this to him. <laughs> you did on purpose. It was great. Well, I no, you don't even know what I'm going to say. I thought the guy you slammed into. That was an accident. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was on purpose. No, the guy that I busted was, I was uh, I went up there and I stood up there waiting for the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, it's occupied. Mm -hmm. And the guy said to me, as he was holding his little Blackberry, you know, his little uh, portable email thing. Right. Uh, he said, uh, no, that bathroom is in use. And he, he looked at me. And I've got on a, uh, a football jersey today, shocker. Uh, he, he looked me up and down and he said, you're not in the first class cabin. I said, no, but you gave me the okay. He said, well, I don't think that's right. There's a reason that... <laughs> no, that must happen. So that happened all bit before Right I before came you walked up. Wow. Oh, what a dick. The guy yeah. said, there's a reason I, I pay first class. I said, well, normally our company pays for us to fly, fly first class if it means anything. But, you know, the flight was, was very overbooked. He said, this is a first class bathroom. And... When the, the waitress, the stewardess, excuse me, came up, right as he was about to bust her, as, about, as he was trying, trying to bust me to her, oh, right. he said, excuse me, and she came over and I said, oh, I got two things. First, I want to thank you so much for giving me, the common man, the chance to come up here and use the privileged first-class bathroom. I looked right at the guy and I said, and second, you might want to notice... He's using his BlackBerry while we are in flight. Ah, <laughs> good job. And she got pissed at him. Good. And she right. said, you're not allowed to use that electronic device while we're flying. There you go. And the guy said, well, I thought that there were some devices that I could use. She said, no, it's very specific. You, know, you can use a, 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 a DVD player. You can use a computer to watch movies. But, but she said, uh, you can't do something that, that like sends out signals right. to... To get email or something. You, sir, are a criminal. So, <laughs> criminal? She took it from him. Nice. Good. Wow. She took it from him That's and good. said she'd yeah. give it back to him on the way out. <laughs> and I'm positive just because of that. Yeah. When I went into the bathroom after him, 
There was number one all over the floor. <laughs> oh, well, accidents happen. I'm positive that's what the guy had done. <laughs> well, they were they were nice ladies on that plane. Yeah. They really were. And a good we, pilot. We really, Great pilot. Yeah. We really thought that we were not going to make it in time for the show today. And at one point, well, maybe you know me, Don, <laughs> we really thought we weren't going to make it. There was turbulence. Yeah, it was, uh, as far as the takeoff is concerned, you know. Rough. Yeah, I always, here's the deal. It, my, my, my moment of calm when you're flying is that wonderful moment. If you're flying in weather and you've got a rainstorm, is that wonderful moment where the plane breaks through the clouds and you know you're up over the weather. I've never had a flight where you never come out of the weather. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much, uh, U.S. Air. It was a very nice flight. Mm -hmm. Thank you for getting us back in time to do our radio show. Safe Amen. And if you're listening right now, Derek in seat 9F. <laughs> Did Derek ever move? Never. Never. No. You seem nice enough, Derek. <laughs> but listen, Dick. When you're laying your big, fat ass down to sleep, don't lay your leg over the metal part where my leg goes and give me the, the armrest at least 25% of the time. <laughs> Others. At least 25% of the time. Uh, you know, and this, I think, should go for everybody when you're flying, Coach. Because you know what? It, it, yes, do we have seats that, that recline and go back? But really, on a coach air, an old plane like mm -hmm. that plane we were on today, just don't do it. I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, go on. back maybe an inch, but don't go back all the way. Because it's not fair to the person. I don't care if you've got a toddler in back of you. You're going to squeeze the toddler back there. Right. It's really just not cool to slam your seat back all the way just because the button lets you do it. Mm -hmm. Be, you know, have some courtesy for the people there. I, you know, I never, when I'm flying coach, I never put my seat back. I don't do it. I, right. I might put it back uh, just an inch, you know, thinking that there's somebody in back of me. But... I've, I, have you ever been on, you know, when you fly coach, and the guy, as soon as they sit down mm -hmm. in the seat, they That's just rip my, it back into your knees. Yep. 9F, first name, Derek. Derek went all the way back. With <laughs> Hopefully his listening now. I must underscore this. It's very important to someone like me with long legs. Well, you're 6 what? 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three, yeah. Yes, it's sort of important. But also, I have picked up a trick from Don. You can always tell when someone's about to recline. Just push as much weight as you can forward. Right. And don't let them come back. Mm -hmm. No one has yet had the balls to turn around and say, excuse me, are you pushing on my seat? Then I you do it. just give up. Yeah. I do it all the That's time. Great thing as soon do. as the seat comes up, I push. Awesome. And, and sometimes they think that it's a malfunction of the seat, mm -hmm. and they push it back. Right. And I push forward, and they just give up. You know, and I think if they ever did turn around, you'd say, really, I don't have enough room back here for you to uh, do that. Right. Uh, so, let me see, uh, Saddam Hussein, Buzz, uh, dead or alive? I think he's alive. The U.S. government is now saying that somebody is still giving orders to the Iraqi military, and so the U.S. government says that there is a fair chance I'm that not gonna he's, get pissed he's at the this. guy. I'm not I got get... all excited last know, night when we got back to the hotel after dinner. We'll tell you about the, the dinner. <laughs> guy got all excited, wanted to call, because I thought you guys were watching the, the game, mm -hmm. and I was flipping around, and I see the, the bulletin on NBC, you know, Saddam is dead. Yeah, and for anybody that was listening to us yesterday, we have to give props to Mr. Jim Nance, who literally called the end of that game Amazing. exactly how it transpired, which blew me away when yeah, I got at the end. He named the player. He named the player and that it would go down to a shot at the buzzer. A three-point shot. Now, it was a shot not to win the game. It was a shot, an attempted shot that missed, and uh, Syracuse you know, won the game. But, but it, was, still, it was amazing the way it went down there, and he knew it. Because he was doing that whole Adam Venetieri thing, too. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello there. Hey. Hey, how you doing? We're doing uh, great. Just wanted, good, excellent. I wanted to just say very quickly... Uh, here you have a working man that spends a lot of time uh, doing local deliveries here in Rockville, Maryland. And you guys just definitely brighten up my day all the way. Uh, always make me smile, and uh, I want to thank you guys for that, and keep up the good work. I would imagine doing deliveries around this area with the traffic we have in Washington, D.C., you, you, sometimes you probably uh, get a little squirrely. Hey, listen, when did it... Uh, it, it does get a bit ugly. I know we've only been gone for four days, but when did it go back to winter? Yeah, <laughs> what's up with that? You know, I, I know down in New Orleans it was 80, and of course mm -hmm. it's warm because it's New Orleans, right. but when did it officially go back? To winter, but that's okay. I mean, because it's it, it'll be uh, back to normal. Uh, it's going to be this way all week. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yes, this is Jay. Hi, Jay. How you doing? We're do we're doing great. Uh, giving you a call from uh, 
experience of mine, um, buddy actually had given me this idea. You go on a um, airline, so it's a little overpacked, and like uh, he was saying, he was sitting next to that guy who took up his whole seat and all. If you act terrified on an airline, shake in, hyperventilate a little bit, don't move you up to first class, you have drinks in your hand. You may have a seat. There was no room. Yeah. There, there, there was no room because Michael Wilbon... The sleepy Michael Wilbon was was draped over two two chairs up in the first place. He wasn't. You have to be taking, You'd like him to be taking two first class. Mike, please. when I saw him, that the, the guy with the BlackBerry was the guy that was sitting next to Michael Wilbon oh, in first okay. class. All right. So. Technically, <laughs> while the guy was up there arguing with me about whether I could be using the first class right, bathroom, right. that's the moment that Michael Wilbon decided, <laughs> oh, I'm going to stretch out. Oh, and that's, <laughs> that's when I gave, I gave Mike the look like, yeah. you got to come up here and look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see Michael Wilbon. We were jealous. Michael Wilbon was sitting like right in front of us and had a first class seat, you know, and it was, uh, it was just a drag. All smelly and unwashed. <laughs> and that's an old wearing plane. his jogging suit. That's an old plane from when people were smaller. Yes. Hello, Don, Don and Mike. Hello. Hey, Don. I uh, was listening to the radio last night on the game, and you know the announcers were going crazy and stuff. And Jim Gray butted in and said that Saddam Hussein and some of his lieutenants were all dead, and it just it just stopped. Jim Gray. Yeah, it was amazing. Hey, listen, was I know funny. we got a good Kent on here, guys. Saddam Hussein's dead. One one more call. We got a break. Don and Mike. Hello. Hey, Don. Yeah. Um, what was the fake name that you had at the hotel? You wouldn't tell us. Adam West. Adam West. That's right. Now, if you are a savvy listener, you might have heard my clue. My clue that not even Don picked up on the other day. Which was? When I said, don't be two-faced. Yes, the two-faced character from Batman. What was funny <laughs> is when I would uh, go to the gift shop or go to the bar, mm -hmm. and they would say, you know, what room? And I would say, you know, 3814. And they'd say, the name? I'd go... West. Adam West. <laughs> and they come over and they go, thank you very much, Mr. West. And I actually was signing the name Adam West. And I'm sorry I revealed your other name, George Clooney, and you had to go through hoops to uh, get that change. Is that why you sent the guy into my room at 1.45 in the morning to the, uh, with an iron? <laughs> Mike, that wasn't from, me. From, from housekeeping. But did you request an iron? I didn't. I did nothing of the kind. What I requested was a wake-up call at 4.35 hours earlier. And, and the guy, you know, bangs on the door. Who wants an iron at 145? <laughs> yes, I thought I'd do some ironing, you know, an hour before we get up. we got plenty of show before we get to the show today. And, and we'll be giving away another trip to Las Vegas. Ooh. Many, many unanswered questions Ooh. from our weekend in New Orleans. Now that I've had time to think about it, Mike, I have some questions for you. Yes, Don. Also, I have some questions for you, Buzz. Okay. And also, I have questions for my best buddy, Robbie. <laughs> Robbie, all those questions involve what it was like rooming ah. with Buzz Burbank. Ah, uh ah. -huh. That's something we didn't even talk about very much on the air. Yeah, that, that they were roomies. Rob and, and Buzz, uh, every morning waking up with their hands between two pillows. <laughs> sharing a room together. Rob, Rob was waking up to a prostate exam every morning. <laughs> Absolutely. Someone called for a doctor? It, Rob was telling me he slept better than he's ever slept in his life. Now well, let's clear the lines. Like I was drugged. And get another uh, 100. Caller number 100. Phone number number 877-365-3636. Identify the secret scary sound. Mm -hmm. Win a thousand bucks. Uh, good luck. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. You know, it's a funny kind of a thing, but you know, I feel better after I got all that off my chest. I feel like I'm like a load. A load is off my shoulders. You're good. I, Doc... Thank you. Mr. Meany, I didn't do anything. Oh, you did something. No, I did nothing. You did something? I didn't. The load? Gone. Where is it? Don't know. You're good. Nah, nah. You're good, Doc. You're good. I'm going to begin to touch with you. Don't. Oh, just one more thing. If I talk to you and you turn me into a fag, I'm going to kill you. You understand? Could we define fag? Because some feelings may come up. I don't up. fag you, Doc. Got it? Simple. Mm -hmm. huh? You're good, Doc. The Don and Mike Show. Yeah. Even better than a baby carriage full of pornography. The Don and Mike Show. 
Uh, what beats that? <laughs> uh, let me mention uh, the Beamits, Brian Mitchell uh, Charity Bash tomorrow night. Yeah. First annual Fight for Kids tomorrow night, the Orange Ball. Hungerford Drive, Rockville, Maryland. Brian Mitchell, formerly of the Redskins, formerly of... Thousand Rob. Formerly of the Redskins, formerly of the Eagles. Now of your New York football giants. Scheduled to appear at Donovan McNabb, Deuce Daly, Dog Walker, Art Monk. And I'm glad they've asked, asked me to be the auctioneer. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow it's uh, 50 bucks with all proceeds going to charity. Got to be 21 or over. Go to BrianMitchellFoundation.org. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Told the old lady put on something fancy. You're going to get all dressed up and you're going to be the auctioneer. Taking her out. Yeah. Take her out for a night. A night. A night. <laughs> Man, I won't, that is I won't, an art form that I am I'm enamored of. Yeah. I won't be doing it like that. You're good at it, though. You've done it before, haven't you? I've done it at my kid's school. Right. But uh, my form uh, that I use is basically the hard sell. Right. Where I'll just say, for instance, you know, if it's an autograph football, mm-hmm. come on. We got to do better, and I'll put people out in the crowd. Right, good. Who I know. You do the uh, 150, 200, I got 200 over here, 200, 200, 150. 150, 200, Don't do that. You know, oh, that's right. I've seen you do it. I just hold it up and I go, I'm on. I think it's worth <laughs> this amount of money. And then I pick on someone until they pay. You browbeat them. This is for charity. Right. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, guys. Hey, Call 100. Yes, you are. And uh, what's your name? Kevin. Kevin, where are you from? I'm in Vermont. Kevin in Vermont? Yeah. You've won the Six Feet Under prize pack. Get to know the Fishers, Six Feet Under. First season, uh, enjoy it now on Divid and Vicious. Uh, don't miss the new season of Six Feet Under. Every Sunday at 9 on HBO. Now you'll play for $1,000 with a common everyday sound. It's not a briefcase. It's not a stapler. It's not a doorknob. It's not... It's not. Uh, please don't answer till Mike sings like BBD. And we oh. wish you Godspeed. I'm trying to think. Man, I'm so tired. BBD. At <laughs> Del Biv DeVoe. Okay. Ah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Godspeed. Oh, there it is. Caller, name this sound. Here it is again. BBD. Del Biv DeVoe. Right, remember, not a stapler. God, I'm tired. How about you? That girl is poison. Never trust a big butt and a smile. That girl is poison. Nice. 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 You're not tired? (laughs) Not at all. No, his head fell should, off. Mike, he shit his head so much, his headphones <laughs> fell off. He said to me, if we were still in New Orleans, uh-huh. he'd be sleeping right now. Yeah, we all would, I think. <laughs> For a thousand dollars. Mike, put your headphones back on. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of liberating. Come on, you like WKRP now. You know, Joe's getting a hearing aid. Did you hear that? Wow. For- <laughs> when he has AIDS in his ears? No, he's just, uh, he's he's got the, the, the hearing thing, and I'm going next week. Wow. They're expensive, you know. Yep. This is we'll be talk about that. I'm digressing. For a thousand bucks, name the sound. The seatbelt buckle. Oh. oh. Negative. Oh, we're sorry. No, thank you, though, and don't forget that every guest is it's a clue. Blue, blue for, for you. you. Blue for you. Thank nice. you very much. <laughs> well, if, uh, if Joe's getting a hearing aid... Pop this pop theme in, Robbie. Oh, you want to talk to her? Yeah, well, I had another segment. Well, Joe and I both had the worst hearing on the show, and we were comparing notes about uh, you know, the fact that I might need one, too. I had a segment for Joe later. We'll probably get to that anyway. But let's, I'll just uh, expect more from a kid named Joe. Let's bring him in right now. Joe's not just a name. It's an idea. This is actually my bonding thing with Joe. And, Joe. Uh, we're comparing notes. We're, we're going to the same place. And, Joe. You know, Joe actually kind of gave me a, almost like a pep talk about going. Joe. Oh, good. So, Joe, you're getting a hearing aid? I, don't, I can't afford one. It costs as much as my car did. Well, we, you know, I think maybe the insurance Joe. will take care of it. Hope maybe. But they want you to get a hearing aid? <laughs> yeah, I'm like half deaf in one ear. But the good news is it's not a, a disease, so it won't get worse. Ah, Joe, at any point, will you start talking like this? No, no, I don't think that'll be the case. 
That's too bad. bad. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. I know that would increase my stock with the show, Don. <laughs> Thank you, <damn> right, though. <laughs> so, uh, are they going to get you one of those little tiny miracle ear things yeah. that you're not supposed to be There's able to see? Several different models, yeah. and she even even put a gave me like a demo with this little machine because they're digital now, mm-hmm. and you can adjust the frequencies in them. You know what's really cheap if you don't want to get one like that? Have you ever seen the movie Wild Wild West? <laughs> you mean the cone? <laughs> yeah. The metal <laughs> cone like the RCA Victor hey. going to a flea market and getting an ear horn. That's what it's called. Hey. So, Joe, when, when do you think you're going to uh, have the uh, the final news about your hearing aid? I don't know. i got to check with HR and see Joe. what's covered. and The human resources, Don. Gotcha. Well, you know, for what it's worth, we're behind you. I'm just glad it's not going to get worse. Okay, you can think that. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Sure. <laughs> Call you in later. <laughs> bye bye, Joe. Good luck and thanks for all the input on that. I'm right behind you. I'm I'm sorry, folks. I'm just I, my A game is not here today. I understand? Not here today. <laughs> I might feel very perky, by you know what? It, it's just a combination of factors. We were all, and I don't think it's you get up early all the time. Um, I, you know, I don't. But you know, it was just that 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 sitting in that tube. That metal tube, when you're really a prisoner, and then, you know, the weather, and, 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 you know, it was not exactly the most pleasant flight in the world. No, and, and I don't want to turn this into a bid session, because lots of people travel and go, and go Yeah, to I work. feel for people that we have to had, do that all the time in all kinds of weather. We had a, uh, a, a good night last night. We, uh, after finding out that uh, Westwood One was going to jip us out of the tickets, I would have gone to the game. That's why I went to New Orleans, was to go to at least one of the bats and probably the national championship. That was the way I understood it. You were going all from the time we made that uh, arrangement to go on that trip. You were going to go. Well, so Charlie said that the Westwood One tickets were like I, like I mentioned yesterday. You get you get into the Superdome. Great. You take an elevator mm-hmm. a level below the playing floor. Okay. You go into a room that has no windows mm-hmm. and you watch the game on TV. Right. And mm-hmm. then. You're given a pass to get in, into the locker room after the game. Uh, well, so, the, you, you know, I, I'm sure you wish you could have gone because it was an exciting game. Yeah, yeah it was. It, it was great. And uh, oh, hold on, somebody on the phone has got a great uh, moment that we know about—a great Bonnie Bernstein moment. Oh yes, uh, Dave. Yeah, did you happen to catch the interview after the game in the losing locker room? Yeah, <laughs> when Roy Williams, the the coach of Kansas, dropped the S bomb. All over Bonnie Bernstein. On oh, live TV. I don't give an S about North Carolina. Man. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, you would think this company, it might as well be the DBS, the delay broadcasting system, rather than CBS, because everything's on a, on a delay. Right. But last night, the basketball game wasn't on a delay. Right. And Bonnie was doing what she should do. She was pushing this guy. Yes, yeah, she was asking a tough question. That's what she's paid to do. Right? She was saying, you know, are you going to go after the North Carolina job? That's it. And, and at first he was very polite. And he said, no, I, you know, I don't want to talk about it now. I've got a room full of kids that I want to go talk to. Mm-hmm. And then she asked him again. And there it was. He lost it. Yeah. Clear as can be. You know, the, that moment, it's sore loser time. Yeah. Well, I was hoping right. there would be some reaction from the desk, like from Gumble or somebody, but they just went right past <laughs> Right. Him. Now, what, what, what is Greg Gumble going to do? Well, really, oh, really, oh, really. Oh, my goodness, they said the else word. Gee, that's really a... Uh, uh, where's, the, where's the fried shrimp? <laughs> yeah. All right, see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, have you ever seen Greg Gumble? <laughs> we went last night, Mike. Did you ever suck the jelly out of a jelly donut and then fill it with chocolate swirl ice cream? I say that last night after the show, I was I was dead tired. Isn't it great when we all go to a restaurant of our own choosing, though? Yeah. 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 And, yep. The one thing that I had wanted in New Orleans, I'd been so goddamn careful on my diet mm-hmm. with the Slim Fast and everything else. The one thing I wanted was this, uh, the popcorn crawfish. crawfish. Right. And we have been to countless restaurants that did not serve it. True. And it's not like the stuff you get at Popeye's restaurant. I mean, it's really, really, really good. Yeah, it's very, very New Orleans. It's the real deal down there. And when I sat down at the restaurant last night, and at first I didn't see it on the menu, 
Man, I was pissed. Mm-hmm. You know what's so funny? It's like, you look at me. When you're Eddie, when you're just feeling like a little tired. At anger. And, and Rob and I went ahead and uh, to get a table and, and walked in. And as soon as we walked in, he said, is your whole party here? No. Well, you'll just have to sit over here and wait. Oh. Which really, when you're you know running ahead for your, your whole group, you're a little let down. But as soon as you came and you gave me this look that was just like, I'm here. But I am not happy about being here. And another good thing, when we went up to the serve, the uh, Mater D, and we said, Hi, Mater D. Uh, table for six, mm-hmm. and he looked at Mike and I and said, Is your whole party here? He said, No, no, we're just that fat. <laughs> here's, here's the thing, and I'll tell you now, the, at the end of the show yesterday, I was uh, overtired and crabby. Right. And, crabby. and a lot of times, <laughs> you're not... <laughs> As as punctual as I would like you to be, <laughs> and I, I know that I'm kind of a dick about that, right? And I don't like it when the tables are turned. You and last night we went up to the room and we said after the show we said we'll be back at the revolving door in ten minutes. Well, I went up to the room and what I spent my ten minutes doing was what is right here, right? Writing down notes about things that had happened during the show, right? That I wanted to talk about and. Uh, I'm leaving my room at, I think, 13 minutes past the hour, and I get a call from Lisa saying, are you on your way? And I said, yes, I'm three minutes late. And she said, Mike already left. Oh, no, see, that's B. S. How long, how long did you wait? No, what's B. S. is that Mike already left. The, the, what the whole situation, Buzz, mm-hmm. please defend me here and that. Uh, hold on, here's what, Lisa. Uh, Lisa's here too. Let Lisa hey, maybe that's how it, it came out, but I was actually looking for you because I thought you were with him. Hmm. And, and what I explained to Lisa was that Mike and Rob had gone ahead to get us a table so that because we were all hungry, none of us would have to wait for our we dinner. We were coordinating because everybody was going to the game, and so we were coordinating the cab line, yeah. and I said. We'll go ahead and get because if it's a table for six, I thought the restaurant might be slammed like they were the other you night. We were doing a solid. We well, all going, I got yeah. was no. I just, I actually called to sell you out. All I got was just go ahead and eat. Ooh. All I got was Mike. Mike already left. <laughs> I like <laughs> see, and then I get the and Lisa. Then I get the dirty look. You see, mm-hmm. when we got to the restaurant, and you can ask ask my wife on the way on the way to the restaurant. I don't understand, but Lisa doesn't normally give misinformation to people. I called her up on the phone and the said, "Why are you? What, what does that mean? She said, what are you so uptight about?" I said, "God damn, I, I'm hardly ever late." And Mike, like, couldn't wait three minutes for me. I was up in the room doing work for do the show. Do you understand though that, that that was the reason I did that? That was that was the reason yeah. I went ahead. And then this morning again. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, but you know what? That's a payback because you've done that to me. One million times. I know it is. And it's, you know what? You said seven minutes. You've done it to me. You know what your count time is with me? It's five minutes. Well, <laughs> I, first off, I think we met too early to begin with. Yeah. Well, my, you, you're, you were right about that. My time to leave was 5.30. Mike yesterday talked us into leaving the hotel at 5. So at 5.07. Little did we know we could have left at 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At 5.07. I'm coming down the escalator. I've got my two bags and I got a cup of coffee that I'm trying to drink as fast as I can. And my phone rings and I got to take it out of the holster thing and I, and I put it up to my. I see it's Mike and I put it up to my ear and I go. I, I think I didn't even let you speak. I just said I'm on the effing escalator. <laughs> Click. <laughs> We'd like this. This is what you know. I, I've been waiting actually to get on the air because I can't do it without a microphone. But I call and it rings twice. You just. And then you hear this. I'm on the effing escalator. Black <laughs> escalator. <laughs> well, last night I apologize. I was. Uh, we're all tired. Uh, last, last night at the restaurant, I really thought Not that you just, were. I, I, I thought you were giving me like payback. Oh, I am so pissed at that that you're gonna have. That's what I did. But wait, let me get my cunning honey on the phone. She'll tell you because she was saying. Chill out. Who cares what time you get? Hello. Hey, hola. Oh, hey, let me turn down the music. Yeah, why listen to Dad's show? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yo. Is uh, Mom around? No. You know where she is? Nope. All right. What, uh, what are you enjoying today? What do you mean? What's the music you're enjoying? 
Oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. No, come on, what is it? Right now? Right now. It's a group called Dynamite, Dynamite Hack. Dynamite Hack. All I right. thought it was Michelle Branch. No, come on. <laughs> no, everybody knows I like Vanessa Carlton. Okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> oh, yes, all right, I'll talk to you later. What? What? I'm sorry, never mind. So how are you? No, no, listen, I'm, uh, Barty, I'm, uh, you know how I am. I'm overtired after the trip. I'm fine. And I'm not even going to mention the thing over the weekend. What? You know, the, the, the discussion that we had. Um, you and I? No, the discussion that you and Mom and I had over the weekend about college. What? You know what I mean. <laughs> Made quite an impression. <laughs> you, he remembers it like it was yesterday. We're out of town. I know I was out of town, but we had a, we had a discussion on the telephone on Saturday about w when you go down to college that you don't want me to go and you don't want Mom to go. You just want to take yourself. No, I didn't say that. Okay, but anyway. I said I am fine going by myself. I don't, you don't have to go if you don't want to. But, uh, but I want to. Yeah, I, I want to. I promise, as I told Mom, I promise I won't make a scene. You won't cry? I won't cry. I won't do that thing where I hug you and tell you that I love you because you already know that. Frankly, I and I mentioned this to Mom, here's my plan with you. I'm going to help crate your stuff down to college because I think you could use the room, room in my truck. You don't even have to drive down with me. You can drive your own car down. I'll drive, help you move the stuff in your room, shake your hand, and then goodbye. Okay, are you trying to guilt me, or is that serious? No, that's serious, because I think that's what you want, right? You, the, well, I, I, I would not like to leave it on a bad note. No, no, Marty, I don't mean it on a bad note, but I think... What you're afraid of is that I'm going to go down there and embarrass you and do the whole thing, you know, where I put my arm around you and say, you know, this is the last time we have together and, you know, you're, you're my man and I love you and all right. that other That's stuff. I suggested going down by myself only because you could do all the sentimental stuff right in our driveway. No, but I want to help you move in to the place and I promise I won't be sentimental. I'll just be like a moving guy. Oh, okay. I'll be there with that, you know, that dolly thing, and that, that, you know, that red thing we got, that hand cart? And then you will cry all the way back home. Yeah, I'll cry by myself, but I, but I, I won't do it in front of you or your buddies. Buddy? You know, or your buddy, whoever, whoever you're, you're with. Oh. You know, what, what I mean is once you're at college, you're at college. Yep. Trust me, I, I have no desire to hang around and have a big going away party in front of you and your new college friends. I want to be known as the cool dad. So I'm going to just pull up, help you unload stuff, and then well, say... Well, Dad, you you could secure your spot as the cool dad. How's that? Just pick up a little something on the way down, like a housewarming gift. A housewarming gift. Mm -hmm. And exactly what housewarming gift do you think you need for your dormitory at okay. college? What? A cake. A cake. That's very a nice. A cake. A cake. A cake. He can, <laughs> incidentally, he can make those jokes now. He is 18. Sure. He can make those jokes. That, All right, bud. Drinking age is still 21. I know it is, but we know we know Clemson has different rules. <laughs> All right. I love you. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Hold on. He can make that. Yeah, that was part of the big... I didn't even tell you about that big to-do on Saturday. Well, I suppose you can understand it, but you know what? It's your prerogative as a parent to, to drop him off at college. Yeah, I said he doesn't. What parents have, do. He doesn't have a choice. I'm going to be there. I'm going to help load the stuff in his room. You want to go see his roommate? You want to check all that good stuff? Yeah. I don't... Hey, baby. Daddy, I'm in Safeway. Okay. Hey, it's a lady. That's okay. That's where you should be. <laughs> what do you get when you're getting a cold store? I'm, I'm in the medicine part, and I don't remember what you're supposed to put on it. Ambisol. Okay. Rob says cyanide. cyanide. Ambisol. Hi, Lisa, what? Herpesin or Abreva works best. Herpesin? God. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's like a chapstick. I, have, I don't want to ask for it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, no, it's by the chapstick. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's on my lip. Yeah. Yeah. It's like chapstick. Okay. Abreva's like three times as much and works too. Hey, it's a lady. Hi. Okay, <laughs> baby. Yes, darling. I was just telling you, know, I was just. Boy, we're all dancing around that, aren't we? Welcome home, Doc. Lisa had, Lisa had something happening on on her, 
<laughs> upper lip that I believe was stress related when we were down in Atlanta. And the thing is, to come and they go so fast with Lisa, the, the mm-hmm. cold sores or whatever the hell they are. Right. That well, the, the medicine must work then. I've got to find that stuff mm-hmm. you're talking about. Anyway, um, here's why I'm calling you because I was just apo- I was just apologizing to Mike. I had been fed, and, uh, and I don't think maliciously so. Bad information. Oh, I think completely malicious. Remember last night when I was telling you, when I called you, uh, I was in the cab with, with Buzz and Charlie and Lisa, and I said, you know, damn, I'm pissed that, you know, Mike couldn't wait three minutes for me. To, yes, huh? and you took Mike's side. You did. Yes. Thank you, Frida. And she said... You don't know how often that happens. <laughs> and, she, and she said... <laughs> and you, you're not going to believe this. What? She said what ended up being interesting, maybe he just went to get a table. That's exactly what I did. And I said, yeah, because he's going to get a table. Cause it could be Were so- you in the car, too, when he, when this yes. was going on? Well, yes, how come was. you didn't pipe up? He was on the phone at the time. I didn't oh, know that- Jesus. Well, I said, yeah, because he's got to get a table because it's going to be so crowded tonight because everybody in New Orleans is going to go to dinner. No one's going to the to the basketball Well, game. it would have been different if I didn't say that when I was leaving. That's that's why I, I was saying that. I spoke up. See, we had this little... I didn't know. You know, Buzz, Don wasn't on the phone the entire time. Thank you, Charlie. That's phone right. Phone. That's true. You but had I, a lot of God, time. F everybody, I, okay? Yes, I just want Charlie, to say that. F everybody. I gave you and Lisa Except the proper Charlie. information. Hey, don't yeah. F me. Oh, not you either, Frida. That's right. You yeah. and Charlie are, are off the hook. Right. Isn't that the way it always is? I don't give an S about North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> So I called her last night to say the the whole thing about it. So I that's why you gave me the the, the killer look. Yeah, I was pissed. I, you know, I was, I'm down there. I'm like, God damn. I've waited for him. I mean, I went through a whole thing. I said, I have waited for Mike for 10 minutes, 50 minutes. He's constantly late. I am not constantly said, late. He can't wait. Five minutes for me. <laughs> didn't when you called me on the phone? Didn't I say that Mike and I had gone ahead to get a table? Yeah, but here's the thing. I thought you were with Mike, so you were saying that because <laughs> no, no, no. Mm-hmm. because Mike was with you. This is why our business trip idea. should not be more than four days. <laughs> yeah, I think what is ninety sixth hour? That's yes, they go bad. Absolutely. Oh, and baby, <laughs> what boo? Baby, I called home first, and uh, it's now official on the record with the boy. And we I went through it about the the college thing very briefly. That I have said publicly that when when it comes time to take him to college, that all I'm going to do is go down, drop the stuff off in the room, see his roommate. I'm not going to be an emotional, you know. Oh gosh. You will. No, no, I'm not. Not in front of him. I won't. But what if you're like in the dorm room with him? You shut the door. You give him a hug. No, that's he what he. You know that's what, what he, he doesn't said to want. me, and this is a quote: "I'm going to have to spend four hours to bed that I could be drinking." And I, he said, "I promise, I promise, he won't waste four hours of I love you and be a good guy and pat you on the back." You know, I guess gone are the days. <laughs> When it was okay to be a dad mm-hmm. that wanted to, and I don't want four hours with him. You know, I was I was thinking maybe just five minutes. But you know, you, you really, it, it, seriously, if you're dropping your kid off at college, it's an opportunity for you to meet the the roommate and maybe the roommate's parents, and that's you know they, that's a whole new well, social thing that you guys do. I said he didn't have a choice in that, or I was doing it. And if, and if he doesn't want the big teary goodbye, I wouldn't give him the teary goodbye. I'll just bring the stuff up to his room, check out the roommate, and then say goodbye. You know, and then you know, you slip my wrist on the way out. <laughs> but I will be um, as cute, as, as cool as as cool as the other side of the pillow. Very good. <laughs> while we are there, dropping him off for the college experience. All right. Well, I, I I will be surprised if that happens, but because, I'll be proud of you. Because that is the only way my son will allow me to go. Because otherwise, I, I'm I'm afraid that he's going that he thinks that I'm going to like roll up into a into into the fetal position. That's it. When in reality, you know, listen. Here's the thing. I love him. You know that, baby. I love him more than anything. I love him more than life itself. But don't get me wrong. There is a big part of me. I was telling this to Rob or to Buzz somebody the other day. Mm-hmm. I'm ready for him to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. It's not oh, abnormal. It's I don't normal. think when we get there. You know, have you seen that commercial where the mother's giving the kid the cell phone and she's, like, remembering his entire life while uh, while some sappy song is playing? It, the commercial makes me cry. I'm, I, I know that's the way you're going to be. Well, see, the problem is 
I, 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 maybe I'm. I, no, you know what? I don't think I've done it wrong as he's grown up. The problem is, I tell him I love him too much, and we do too much stuff together. I don't think that's wrong. And no, no, you tell, but you tell him. See, here's the problem. You tell him, and then it would be nice if you just threw it out there. Even you know, even if you say, okay, a couple of times a day, that'd be nice. But not only do you tell him all the time, but if you don't immediately say, I love you too, you get in trouble. No, you don't get in trouble. It's just well, you don't get in trouble as in punished, but you get in trouble. Uh, what's the matter? What's the matter? Don't you love me? I mean, it's a little... See, it's not just the uh, telling of I love you. It's the insecure, you must hear it back immediately. I love you, son. How come you didn't respond? Go to your room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, trust me, When we get by the time we get down to Clemson in August, I'll have it under control. All I'll right. be fine. Now, I'm making no promises for his high school graduation. I will completely lose control of my bladder and bowels. <laughs> I will cry like a schoolgirl. I will sure. fall on the floor. I will roll around. I will ball up my fist and I will scream, no, 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 no. <laughs> why, why, why? <laughs> All right. I love you, baby. All right. I love you, too. You got to, you know, you got to start, um, you got to take in an orphan or something. You've got to start bonding with younger children. No. No problem. I'm ready. All right. I'm set. Okay. I, I got it under control. All right, I'll believe it when I see it. Rob, I don't want to adopt Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Rob just wrote down, adopt Joe. No thanks. <laughs> All right, I love you, baby. <laughs> I love you, too. So anyway, Mike, she stood up for you last night. Thank you, Frida. Yeah. Sorry I doubted you. And right, rightly so. Mm -hmm. nope. uh, A noble thing. Hello, Don and Mike's show. Hello. Hey, Don. Yeah. Hey, you're being a dick. You know what was on Best of last week? What? Um, you know the fantasy football draft? Mike was like, uh, I think it was like five or seven minutes late. Uh, sir, and that he was. Started picking without him. Sir, that Thank was you. A, that was a group decision. That was no, not. You were you were completely <laughs> instrumental. <laughs> now listen, if we're going to rewrite history, you have to you have to take your poison for that. You were completely stirring the drink as far as that was concerned. And the rest of the fellas went along. With <laughs> yes, yes, they went along. But whose idea was it to get it was going? My idea. Yes, it was your idea. Because because right. You have to be on time. <laughs> and the draft is an important deal. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? You know, I can't believe. You know, I, I believe that I just got a simple apology. And you know what? With, with dinner last night, after I gave you that fabulous floor show that I haven't done maybe in years, <laughs> oh, Mike, Rob was just complimenting me on it. Oh, I was it was great. great. It was Mike, great getting that compliment from Rob Spiewak. Mike put all the crawfish on his, fi on, on his finger and head. Do you know what Rob said to me about that? He said, uh, what, Rob said I could have won a <laughs> could have won a contest. Mike put <laughs> Mike put the, Mike put the crawfish on each of his fingers and one the crawfish on the heads. The crawfish heads and re redid scenes from Full Metal Jacket <laughs> yes. musicals. We were we were, we were dying, were and you know there was other tables watching you. I didn't, I didn't know take, that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They loved it too. But what you have to know is when you take the head off a crawfish, it's also the claws and the long whiskers and antennae. So every time they would bounce, their hands, their little claws would bounce too. It was very animated. Mike, it looked beautiful. like you had little muppets on your it fingers. Really we are not. going to pick up a potato. Are we going to pick up? And the thumb was the drill sergeant, That's right. and the other four fingers were the rest of the platoon. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were, sir, yes, sir. Are we going? to pick up a potato. Yes, sir, we are. <laughs> are we going to pick it up, too? Sir, yes, sir. It was uh, fun. Uh, by, by that time, you would, uh, you know, <laughs> you had me at, uh, yes. you had me at potato. I know all was right with the world at that point. And that was, uh, you know what, really, uh, when we weren't forced to go to one of those shindigs yeah. for Westwood One, and we all were just hanging out, and we could get what we wanted, mm -hmm. it was just, a, it was a very pleasant evening. Great night at Deanie's. Deanie's oh. Seafood, oh. if you're ever in New Orleans, I recommend it oh, highly. Yeah. Don and Mike, hello. Hey, Don and Mike, how's it going? Hey. Don, I think uh, your status as a cool dad will be reserved if you do show sentimentality with Bart when you leave him to college. No, well, listen, hold on. Really, there's something about being a cool dad I'm kidding about. I hope you get that. All right. Because when my dad left me to college, he did break down and hug me, and uh, all the girls picked up on it, actually. Oh, wow. I don't doubt that. Hey. I, be I believe that guy. I absolutely. Hello there, Don and Mike show. Yeah, hey, Don. I there's breaking it. down Hello. and breaking down, though. Like, if you really go... <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. one, maybe you think maybe it's Bart that's afraid that he's gonna break down in front of these new guys. Could uh, be. Get embarrassed. No, Could not be. a chance. You don't think so? Not a chance. No, he's uh he's counting the days till he gets out. <laughs> uh, hello, Don and Mike. Good afternoon, Don. How you doing? Hey. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? Great. 
question for you, Don, if I'm not getting too personal. Go ahead. Are you paying for your college education, or does he have, uh, did he get scholarship? No, I'm paying. If you're paying for him to go to college at Clemson, a fine learning establishment, you should be able to go down there and kiss him on his butt goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal, but who's in charge here? Right, I know, but listen, it's, it's all part of the, the problem is what Frida was saying was, was right, and I don't think it's wrong the way that I brought my son up or my or the way that I am with my wife. That's how I am. I, I I'm a big a hole dick on the radio, but in real life with them, I'm very touchy feeling. I'm blessed to have such a great family, and I do tell them all the time that I love them. And if I don't get it back, I do say, "Hey, what's up? Where's my love? Yeah. Give me." Some, I say that to them all the time. Give me some love. I think, yeah, you've done fairly well so far. I don't think you have anything to worry about. And, and You I'm play not, it the way you want to play it. I'm not going to break down to college, and I'm not going to embarrass Bart in Jeez. college. When my kids go away to college, even though I'm in a different circumstance and I've got all this turmoil in my life, I'm going to be like, and especially when you mentioned high school graduation, mm. I'm going to be like, I, I get it when, when they're doing their first and kindergarten play. Yeah. It gets me. You know, it's incredible. I know we got a break, but I'll tell you right now, I'm just going to recreate very quickly. Exactly how I'm going to handle it with Bart. <laughs> when I'm standing at, at the school? At the school. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me make sure we got this right. Right. Okay. Well, so. Well, hold it. All right. I'll have to look at myself. Give me just a moment. All right. We are uh, we are basically setting the scene. We're taking you to Clemson University. It is late summer of 2003. What I will do is I will say... Bart, today you're a man, and I think in order to control my emotions so I don't get you down in front of your friends, I think it would be best if we spoke from different rooms. I'm going to go in the bathroom, and you wait outside the door. And then he'll hear this. Helping you to understand comedy. God damn it. How am I helping people to understand comedy when I can't hit the right button? I go, Bert! Oh, I love you so much! I've never been so proud of a young man in my life, and everything you've done has just made me the, the proudest man! I, today, I consider myself to be the luckiest man on the face of the earth, but I, I will not embarrass you in front of your friends. He went out in the dorm hall there going, my God, what's going on in there? But I just want to tell you one thing, son. I love you. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Goes right to your tummy. So that's how I'll handle it. I think that's a perfect way to handle oh, that. Uh, You'll be remembered. So, uh, when we get back, I guess we'll use the music to set it up. We have a, a trip to Las Vegas. Ooh. Tell you how we'll give that away when we come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. But I want to be connected. I want to be part of the loop. It's taken us eight years to totally disconnect you the way you always wanted to be. So keep this in mind. If I connect you, you will be connected. Fine. Then connect me. Fine. Connected you will be. Good. Hey, Artie. Yeah. Do you ever notice that we get caught up in a certain kind of thought process? Thought process? Yeah, thought process. What thought process? Like the thought process we're involved in right now. I think we should try and catch it and put a stop to it. Fine. And stop it, we shall do. Good. The Don and Mike Show. They're ready to believe you. Come on, Pebble. You too, Dino. Daddy's speaking on the radio. They have Herculean appetites for the diverse and the bizarre. Don and Mike. Right, right. All right, let's uh, clear through these calls and get away to trip to Las Vegas. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, radio guy. Howdy. 
Hey, Mike, that's the funniest dance that I've ever heard. Don, way to go. What? What did he say? What are you talking about? I'm dead. The last, the last bar bit. I'll laugh my ass off all the way down 95. The last bar bit? Yeah, fart, fart. Oh, oh my, oh my, fart bit. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. It was a good bit. Thank yeah, you. It was. It was, it was a good. It's good bit. I'm glad we wrote that script on the plane. That was a fantastic sketch. Yeah. Hello, Don Mike Show. Hey, how you doing? Okay. <laughs> Turn your radio down, please. Or hang up. Or just you right, just yeah. hang up. Uh, hi, Don and Mike Show. Hello. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah. Got a question for you guys. Yes, sir. I wanted to know what you thought of Beheim's wife last night. Oh, she's a hottie. She's a MILF. She's not the MILF of the year. She is the MILF of the she's year. A, she's a SILF. And, man, he ought to just throw his... He ought to throw himself on his knees and thank God. He didn't even deserve that national She's a quilt. That piece. C-W-I-L-F. Uh -huh. Coach's wow, wife, wow, wow, I'd wow, like wow. to F. She's a quilt. A quilt, I like that. <laughs> a quilt. I, and I agree with this caller, too. He didn't deserve the national championship with a wife like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, hey. <laughs> Look at her. Really? Right? What a piece of ass she is. And they, you know, that wasn't lost on CBS either. I mean, Quilf. Yeah. CBS was uh, putting the camera on that quilt every opportunity they got. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Yeah. How are you doing? Okay. What's going on? Come on, what do you want? We're doing a radio show. What can we do for you? I'm just saying what's going on. I'm trying to win, Donna Mike. Ah, uh, now the well, truth oh, comes oh, out. The, the Las Vegas. We'll tell you how we're giving that away in a second. Oh, Donna Mike, you're killing me here. Yeah, well, I'm killing you. Well, good. Kill, I hope we're killing you softly <laughs> with our song. <laughs> hello, Don and Mike. Hey, guys. Hey, it's Blind Glenn. Well, I'm hello. So lucky, though. I'll, I got two things to tell you. Number you one, tell away. the casinos out here got you in five, five minutes. Over the over and under is five. But you'll start crying. Oh, with Bart and College? Uh, yeah. All right. And I took 20 on the under. There you go. Now, number two. Yeah. The yeah. body burns seems to smell real good. Yeah. She smells wonderful. Oh, I love her. Especially oh, yeah, when we just she, sniff her one time. She gets a little sweaty, you know, in the New Orleans humidity. And mm. she what do you have on when you all were interviewing her? A nice, tight, black top. Oh, very, I'm Woody. Very tight, black pants. There's a blind guy, incidentally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, blind Glenn, you know what you would love? What? About a year ago, I drove Bonnie... <laughs> To, down to the train drive, Bonnie. To the, to the train station, wow. and she was actually seated in my automobile, oh, so you wow. could smell. He, Glenn could actually come up to the watch seat. You smell the seat for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and blind people can smell better than sighted people. Okay. Sure, and I. But this is the horniest call you've ever made, Glenn. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's wild when, I, when I heard you guys interviewing her. Mm. <laughs> I had to get out of the hotel. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Blind Glenn, you'll probably appreciate this. I will. Uh, hey, uh, well, hold on. You don't know what it is, but it, but it has to do with blind people. Maybe you will. Uh, I don't know. Who, pardon me, guys in the room, I told you that. Maybe I only told Rob. Dave Chappelle, his show is hit and miss, right? The show he's got on the WB or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I watch it once in a while, and he, he was doing a skit that had me on the floor. Now, here's the premise. It's a black guy who's blind. He's been brought up in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. He's been told that he's white. Mm -hmm. It's around the time of civil rights unrest. He gets on a bus one day to go to the library to read some books in Braille. Yeah. And it's a guy, a teenager, they got him dressed up, and... All these guys on the bus are saying, you know, get that N-word off the bus, you stupid N-word. And he starts saying, hey, I don't see any ends around here. Oh, get that in out of here. And the next scene is him at a lynching. Oh. Where? Because he thinks he's white. Because he thinks he's white. Because thinks he thinks he's white. And... Maybe I'm not telling it properly. No, I I, I, I can see uh, that Chappelle's a funny guy. The concept was hilarious. Yeah. That it's a black guy. Who's and, just been lied to his whole life. And he's with all of these racists. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's at a KKK meeting. <laughs> and at one point, they're trying to string him up. Is he doing that, the exaggerated white talk? Yeah, and he's... Hi, how are you? And he's saying... <laughs> 
I'm as white as white can be. <laughs> and they're saying, boy, you're black. And he said, I hate the black. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> When's well, that show on? Late. Late, late, late. Like the ten thirty. It's an HBO show, isn't it, or is it uh, is it regular TV? It's WB. WB. Hey Don, mm -hmm. would you rather be blind, deaf, or crippled? What kind of cripple? Well, you have to be in a wheelchair. I'd rather be deaf. How about you, Mike? Deaf. Buzz. I think blind. Robbie. I'd say crippled. Lisa. Rob would say crippled. And how about Lisa? <laughs> nah, you just want an excuse to oh, talk to Lisa. Get out Don't of you mad with his towel. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Don and Mike? Yeah. Hey, guys, the Dave Chappelle thing it's called Comedy Central. Oh, is that, ah. is that the, the channel? Pimp, they did a skit where he was the uh, a grand wizard of the Klan and, that, and didn't know he was black because he was blind. It must be a continuing skit. Oh, so, so it's yeah. the blind black guy that's right, like a continuing skit. He, he would wear the hood, and everybody's cheering because he's so racist. And then he took off the hood, and everybody realized he was black. <laughs> I'm telling you, he that's killed, good satire. I like yeah, that. I fell on the floor the first time I saw it. Oh, my God. They said at the end, they put this thing up where it said, the, the, whatever the guy's name was, he killed himself once he realized he was black because he wanted all blacks out of the world. Oh, my God. Oh, I was rolling. That was one of the best gifts I've ever seen. That's good. Oh, uh, you know who's on the phone? Chris the Loser. Uh-oh. From Seattle. Says he's in a mess. Oh, dear. I'm in a huge mess. What's wrong, Chris? Oh, okay. A month ago, I called Joe, and I had this girl over. Remember the girl I was seeing? Right. And anyway, I pee the next day, and my penis hurts, and it stings when I went to pee. So I called Joe. I'm like, what do Joe. I do? So, what do I do? Well, that's who you call when your penis hurts. Right, you call right. our phone. Yeah, screen. but, dude, I'm not going to go to the doctor when I don't know what's going on. And he looks at me and calls me herpy guy or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, right. Go to Joe. Joe. Well, come to find out, I had a yeast infection because she had one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I get that squared away. Um, I lose my job at Walmart. Oh, no. Mm. Because, of, because of your penis? No, because I called one of the coworkers a fat bitch because she told on me because I was listening to your guys' show. Yeah, you know, my crap detector is going off on him big time today. Is it really? Yeah, maybe it's because I'm tired. Yeah. I think it's because you're tired. But I just, I, I don't know, for some reason today I got it going. And, you know, we've done a really good job of eliminating whatnot from this show. <laughs> Can we please make a now, make an effort to I, get rid I'm of gonna, your guises? I'm going to call in as a character witness, Joe Ardinger. Very good. Jill's not just a name, it's an idea. Don't Here he is. Your guises. The soon to be deaf Joe Ardinger. Let's let's have Joe stand up for Chris. To, to I'd like to get Joe's impressions of Chris. Joe, what do, you, no, what do, no. you, think do you believe his penis hurts? Joe? Doesn't all of our penises hurt? <laughs> Joe. Oh, yeah. Joe do, hurt. do you believe his his hurts? I guess I don't know what to make of him. I keep getting calls to these on other radio shows and stuff. What do you think? I mean, do, do, uh, you have a bit of a crap detector. What do you think this guy's on the level? Uh, he's got to be the unluckiest man alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps coming, you know, down on him. Do you think like, maybe he's got a real job and he just says this is like a... As a goof? What he does... Do you want to call Walmart? No. No. No, not really. Maybe tomorrow. Call back tomorrow. <laughs> we're just, we're just yeah, maybe it's just today. a bad day today. We're just tired and call, punchy. Call back tomorrow, Chris. We're very tired today. I probably won't doubt you tomorrow, Chris. Call tomorrow. You have a better shot, really. If All it right. makes you feel any better, Chris, I only have half my hearing in one ear. <laughs> hold, hold on. Don't a think. I, I got someone right. who wants right. to talk to you. Let me see line five. I can conference these together. Uh, Richard? Richard. Yeah. Richard, don't hide from your feelings. Richard, do you want to sing to Chris or do you want Chris to sing to you? No, no. Chris had a song about Buzz. I wanted to hear it. Oh, would you sing your song about Buzz? Chris? Chris? I guess he's going back Chris? tomorrow. Chris is gone. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Well, you, know, you, remember, you remember when Chris called the first time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he was in the Beatles? <laughs> right. <laughs> that was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hello? Oh, they suffer a lot. Turn, turn down your radio. Uh, 
Hello? Hello? Yes. This is coming from the man on the screen that says the name is Jesus. No. <laughs> No, my name is Jesus, sir. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, I mean, you pronounce it your way, we pronounce it our way. Yeah, no, Jesus. there's only one way to pronounce it, the right way. What's up, Jesus? <laughs> How y'all doing? Okay. I'm new listener, but uh, I grew, I, my sister what? got me on to y'all show. I love y'all show. It's a great show. Thank, Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say, I know when I left the Army, my dad didn't cry, didn't cry in front of me, but he cried behind me. So, I think it's Don, or I think it's Don, his son going to uh, college. Yes. Go ahead and cry behind him. It's okay. You're not any less of a man. I'm, I'm not sure with your vernacular, cry behind him. What, uh, like, well, like, if you cry behind closed doors, like with your wife or something like that. Cry behind you. All right, Jesus. Thank you. All right, later. And incidentally, for my money, your dad was the greatest. <laughs> he sacrificed you. So no, he didn't. be here today. No. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jesus. Always good later. advice from Jesus. Hello, Thanks. John and Mike. Chewy. Hey, Don. Jesus is just all right with me. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Jesus Don. is my co-pilot. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hey, men can't get yeast infections on their genitals. Yeah, they can, actually. No, they can't. Yes, you, you can get it, it on your... You can get it on your mouth from oral, but you can't get it on your genitals. Not, not a yeast infection. No, you can get it in your urethra. Buzz would know. Ah. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Buzz would know. Hello. <laughs> this is Rusty from Spokane. Yeah, Rusty. Hey, how's it going today? Okay. I just want to comment on Chris. I think he's a, a DA. And he's taking up time on your guys' show. All right, but we like him. But guys is... We, we know that Don't he's... Don't say guys! Is. We know that he's a dumbass, but we kind of like him. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi. Hey, yeah, he did lose his job. Poor guy. Yeah. The guy in Seattle, how do you know? Because uh, I, I delivered to his store, and I wanted to meet him. Uh. So I deliver the time he's there. And, uh, yeah, but you're breathing like this, going... <laughs> oh, I was running downstairs. Oh, okay. All right, Naked? Hold on. All right. Hold on. Chris the Loser is back oh, good. on the line. Let me go to line number eight. Chris. Yeah. Chris, do you have a song about Buzz that you were going to sing for us? Yes, I can sing it. Okay. What's the matter, Chris? It's just I feel in a bad mood, but I always feel good when I think about singing for Buzz. Oh, well, and that's I've, good. I've written this song... Like a month and a half ago. All right, well, go ahead. Sing it now while your penis is... Go ahead, trouble. My penis, my penis is fine. Yeah, he's better now. All right, go ahead. Sing your song about Buzz. Okay. I lost Buzz out in my last song. Hey, Buzz, are you listening? What? Yeah, I'm listening. I love it. Keep going. Please. Where are you choking on the bomb? When I think about Buzz, I always wonder what it's like when you always get it up, you get it in, but you still seem to run dry. See, this is why to me he's worth the price of admission. When you're young, when you're young like me, you get the ladies who like to suck. <laughs> When you're old like Buzz, you get the ladies who can't remember how to... Even if it's a scam. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. a good scam. There you go. I've Wonderful. never been more flattered in my Thank life. Thank you. Goodbye now, Chris. That's good. Bye -bye. Call tomorrow. We'll talk about your penis. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, the trip to Las Vegas here. Here's what we're doing. <laughs> Playing funny music. Now, Mike, you, uh, you requested nudity. We'll have that later this week. Ah, uh, very good. Ah, uh, we have not done, I mean, we've done the this contest, but we haven't done this angle for a long time. And the prize, let me tell you up front, thanks to the good people at Viramax, 1-888-TRY-VMAX. It's a Las Vegas getaway for two. All right. With four nights, five days, including round trip air. Wow. Robbie and I were just there. Love it. Fun city. Love Las Vegas. Great vacation. Thank you, Veramax, for giving us a vacation to Las Vegas every day this week. Ladies, it's your turn to call now. What my husband doesn't know won't hurt him. Or you know what? Let me turn it around. Guys, we always do it with the ladies because it's always safer with the ladies. 
Let's turn it around this time. Live on the edge. What my wife doesn't know won't hurt her. Mm -hmm. So, guys, if there's something your wife doesn't know about your past, mm -hmm. maybe about your present, mm -hmm. call Ooh. now. 877-365-3636. You know the drill. We'll pick the juiciest one, mm -hmm. and then we'll call you up, and we'll make you tell your wife what the lie is. Now, hey, it's a lady. And then just about that moment when your wife is going to take a stake and pound it through your heart, <laughs> we're going to say, hey, you're going to Las Vegas. Now, the, the only thing that we stay away from is infidelity. Ah. However, there's a gray area on infidelity... If it involves, uh, like, an aunt or an uncle or a sister or, or, or something like that. But but if, for instance, if the story was, you know, uh, my wife Frida doesn't know that for the last 23 years I've been having sex with Buzz. With Buzz's wife, Marsha. That's what we don't, and Buzz, sorry that that's how you had to find out. I'm shocked. Um, we don't want to be involved in that. Right. However, beyond that, let her rip. Sure. And I got to think again about the Porsche story. Uh, and I was yeah. mentioning it to Rob when we were walking around um, New Orleans and we saw some dummy on a, on a moped. Uh -huh. And <laughs> Rob was pointing at him and laughing at him. And I said, Rob, you realize 25 years ago when I worked at Kiss of M in Los Angeles, right? That was me. Because Frida and I could only afford one car. Right. And that's when you stole the Porsche. I didn't steal it. <laughs> I bought it without asking my wife's permission. Oh, and you God. hid it from her. And I hid it in a garage. <laughs> Around the block. And every day when my wife would go to work, <laughs> I would wait 15 minutes, I would walk down the street, right, and I would go get in the Porsche that she didn't know that I had bought. Wow. And she caught you and made you return it. <laughs> she did. And it was awful and humiliating. Yes. So if there's something your wife doesn't know, call us now. With the trip to Vegas, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Any cold pasta? Uh, there was some ziti, but it all got eaten. The whole tray from last Sunday? One senior jughead was here. If you are referring to Father in Tintola, yes, he was. Mm. He spent the night here. The priest spent the night here. What happened? Nothing. And you're telling me this because... You might hear something. Take it the wrong way. His car was out front all night. You know what? This is too f***ed up for me even to think about. What'd you guys do for 12 hours? Play, uh, made that pope? He gave me communion. Oh, I'll bet he gave you communion. Excuse me? Well, Carmelo, the guy spends the night here with you. And all he does is slip you a wafer? It's verging on sacrilege. Oh, I didn't mean to verge. Well, you think I'm lying? I don't know, but it, the whole thing sounds... Would I have told you about it voluntarily if there had been anything to be ashamed of? Do I look like the friggin' thorn bird over here? He's a fag. That's it. Because otherwise, i got to question what I'm hearing here. The Don and Mike Show. Practicing total thinker control. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. That's an ongoing project. Every day. <laughs> Uh, we'll get to your calls, what my wife doesn't know won't hurt her coming up. Uh, let me see, uh, very quickly, uh, you know, we just got back in town and I was uh, checking the internet. Let's talk about, uh, yeah, we're having to give me 60 seconds on the clock. I know we're time sensitive now. A couple of issues that have come up on radio, internet, websites. Okay. That I think are funny to read. Mm -hmm. Um... Do you have the 666? And then we'll get right to your calls. Some of them are funny. Okay. Uh, rumor number one. Yes. The air staff of WJFK FM will be moving to Lanham, Maryland. Hmm. Not true. We are staying here. Yay! Yay! In Virginia. Good. The rest of the station, the salespeople, they may move to Maryland. They, moved, they may move to Rockville. Hmm. We're staying here. Good. Good. That's from DCRTV.com, one of my favorite sites. Right. Um, friend of mine in Philadelphia hit me to a site called RadioInfo.com. Right. For someone has written, on April 14th, we will be fired and replaced by Opie and Anthony. Right. On WISB. 
Oh, my God. That's funny. That is funny. Uh, number three, radio internet gossip. Our former station in New York, WNEW, and this is true, flips format on Thursday. Okay. It will not be called Blink 1027. That is a rumor. Yeah. That is a rumor. However, truth, the morning show will be hosted by Jennifer Lopez's sister. That is the truth. That is. Good luck to them. That is the truth. And buzz. Wow. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> So there you go. Those are the three big hot items that I had on the Internet after. Man, the rumor mill is busy. <laughs> For four days of being away from my keyboard, yeah. right? I came back today, and those were the hot items that my friends were sending me. <laughs> Rumors! So I thought we would just uh, address them all right here and, and right now. Excellent. Uh, the trip to Las Vegas, courtesy Veramax. Guys, what doesn't your wife know? <laughs> She should know everything. Yeah, and what better way to break the news to her about something you haven't told her than by uh, giving her a trip to Las Vegas? Yeah. But of course, you got to tell her first. Of course. Yes. And then give her the trip. Let's go right to your call. And probably let her go with her girlfriend. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Who's this? Steven, gentlemen. Steven, hi. Uh, Steve, where are you from? Baltimore. All right, Steve, what is it that your lovely wife doesn't know? <clears throat> well, many, many, many moons ago, I once uh, received oral from a male. <laughs> now, that, that, I'm sorry, I'm laughing right out of the box. That could be made up. Right. We, we have to ask more. Mm -hmm. Who was the fella? Well, it was just a stranger, actually. I was uh, hitching a ride, and a gentleman... Gave me a ride in a van at the end of the uh, little trip. Uh, he pretty much offered the services, and I accepted. How old, how old were you? Oh, I was about 17 or 18 at the time. 17 or 18, and you it was, were... It was, it was many, many moons ago. But why would you let a guy S your D? Um, it, it didn't happen before, and it hasn't happened since. What, um, well, what motivated you on that particular occasion? Were you, I, were you afraid? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It was just an odd situation that sort of happened. And How'd you like it? Um, well, it didn't happen again. Where? That's not the question I asked. <laughs> exactly where did it happen? Where first? Where? Physically well, I, where? In an area of Baltimore that's called Dundalk. Uh, we know where Dundalk is, but now was it, I mean... In a motel, in a car. No, no, actually, actually, in the van itself. In the van, and he just said, uh, "Would you? Could I? Did he? What did you well, ask?" He just said he, yeah, he pretty much said he wanted to. And were you scared? I, I was sort of taken aback. I guess is the is the best way to put it. So wait a minute. You're 17. You get a ride in Dundalk, Maryland. Guy pulls over. What does he say to you? Hey, pretty much bluntly said, "I want to s your." D. And you said, I, I, I don't know. It was, it's, it's, it's difficult to explain how things came about, but one thing led to another. I did mean, you? I, did nothing, you? Nothing, did, nothing was done on my part other than being the recipient. Did you complete? I did. And did, did he it offer? Embarrassing. Did he offer you anything like uh, money or anything like that? No, pretty much just went on my way, and that was that was that. At the completion of that, what did he just dump you out of the van? I was at my location or destination. Oh, you were at when, when this when this happened. Exactly. So what? You were in front of your grandma's house or whatever, and what he he just put his sleeve up to his chin and went, mmm, that was good. I'll see you later." Um, well, not quite that way. It wasn't in front of grandma's. But... I believe the guy because of his discomfort level. I believe him because I mean, you know, so you got how how old are you now? I'm 37. This was 20 years ago. This was quite a while back, yeah. You never told your wife about this. Well, I, I was just telling the screener that it's actually topical because I discussed this probably within a week or so, and I said that it was a friend of mine, Dan, and we were discussing whether it was gay or not, and we both came to the conclusion that it was not gay. And your wife, uh, how did she respond to that when you were saying it was a friend? Um, she was like, that's nasty. <laughs> All right, if you already kind of know is that. Like, let me say my crap detector, or not a homely find like yours. Yeah. Maybe it's just that I'm overtired. Mm. The fact that he threw in that extra nugget, 
I've already discussed it with her. Yeah. Under the guise of this friend Dan. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're going to have to take this. Uh, it, then it's a little shaky. It, you have to take that under advisement. Yeah. Hold on a second. You know, if, if, not... if he was 37 and it was like it happened like at the sh at the Shriners Club last week. Well, that'd be a different story. Right, it'd be a better story, you know. And it was Phil twenty years ago. Frank. Phil, Phil, hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, I like to try to contest. Yeah, who's this, please? It's Dwayne. Dwayne, where are you from? Comfort, man. Dwayne. Oh, another yeah. person on Live One Hundred Five. Dwayne, what is it that your wife doesn't know? She doesn't know that sometimes I take her. Uh... I have to delete you out because so many Infinity Disc jockeys don't know the rules. Let me just say, I'll repeat what Dwayne just said. But what his wife doesn't know is that he takes her love toy, mm -hmm. her vibrator. He puts it in his bad place while he gets his nut. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he rubs one out. Yeah. They're very good. Is that it? Ah, thank you. And no better time for Slim Fast. <laughs> ah, thank you. Is the guy there? Or do we lose him? Hello? Yeah. Now, I hear somebody talking to us. Something's wrong with the phone. Hello? Has he been dumped by a thousand people? Hello? Yeah, there you yeah, go. You're right. He, he was dumped by a thousand people. Mm -hmm. I, oh, okay. I didn't even say anything. Well, no, you, you said... Uh, the M word. You, you can't you, say you the can't M word. You can't say... you got to say J-O or bait. Oh, oh, okay. I'm okay. sorry. You know, I did hear a commercial when they were talking about freshly made bread, and they were talking about some of their master bakers. Ah, uh, touche. So what you like doing is taking your wife's toy, mm -hmm. using it at a place where food comes out, and then that makes you complete on the other side? Correct. Do you, uh... I mean, I... What? No, I don't insert it. You just rest it there? I just rest it there. Do you launder it afterwards? Of course. Mm -hmm. So you you use that would be the proper thing to do. You use your you use your wife's dildo on your rest, self. rest it on his no no. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold kind on. of a theme emerging today, don't you think? Hello there, Don and Mike. Yeah, it's a gay theme. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Oh, it's same guy. Hold on a second. Let me go to line six. Hi, Don and Mike. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, who's this? This is James in Stockton, we California. James in Stockton. Oh, on KHTK. You know this. James, what is it your wife doesn't know? When she pisses me off. Hold on. Mike is already shaking yeah. his head. Yeah, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, ham bone. Yeah, okay. F Any you. Hey, F you. You're out of here. Good call, Mike. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, he's not even to get, able to get down the can of Slim Fast during yeah. that. <laughs> uh, let's go to uh, Ivy. Yeah, hi. Well, now, this is, uh, this is for men calling in. I know. I'm gay, and my partner and I, I've been together seven years, and I said to Joe that I would uh, call at a later time, you know, because I'm not a male. All right, I got you. All right, lesbians can play. Are you the okay. husband in the relationship? Uh, actually, no, I oh. wouldn't be. <laughs> But, uh, uh, still, it's fun to have lesbians play. Yeah. So, what is I it? I love you guys. I've been listening okay. to you for years, and Earth, you Earth. make my day go by so fast. What is it that your lesbian husband doesn't know? Well, I'm I'm pretty nervous about this, but <clears throat> we um we have a son together. Uh, <laughs> he is 15 months old, and we it took us about eight months to decide on a. A donor, and I wasn't really crazy about the donor, so. Were you the mother? Yes, I had him. Mm -hmm. She, um, oh, she says, uh, she thinks we got the sperm from Fairfax Cryobank, and I actually used one of our friends. Oh, that's pretty heavy duty when you have Is one of those little lesbo relationships. Was it David Crosby? No. <laughs> Is it a friend that she knows? Yes. Were you inseminated artificially, or yes. did your friend yes. uh, do the no. dirty deed? No, I was still uh, um, artificially inseminated, but hmm. it wasn't. So you went behind her back to the friend and said to the friend, you know what, fill the cup up for me or whatever they do, right? Pretty much, yes. And uh, is the friend popular with your spouse? Um, in an, sometimes yes, sometimes no. But not so much that uh, your your partner would be happy about. Oh it. no! Oh no! That's good. I, as a matter of fact, I I honestly I don't know if she would even believe it. Although our son does resemble him just a little oh, bit. Yeah. So All right, hold on, hold on. You're in the finals. 
Hold on a second. Crazy yeah, that's, world. and I, I believe that. Hello, Donna, my show. Hello? Turn down your radio. Yeah. You know, it's another girl calling. This contest is for guys. Yeah, yeah but we love you guys. <laughs> but, but listen. Hey, it's a lady. It's a contest for guys calling in with stuff that their wives don't know. Well, my husband doesn't know I know. All right, that's mm. that's that's a different twist. What? Ooh, no, that is a, these. It's like what my wife doesn't know won't hurt her. However, the husband hasn't told the wife, but the wife already knows. The wife does. What secret does your husband think that he has from you? He has pictures of himself in my undergarments. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name, ma'am? Dory. 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 Where'd you find the pictures? In our dresser drawer when we were moving, because we used to listen to you guys in Greenville, and uh -huh. you've been down in Frederick since September, and I just got here in January, but I had to pack up our house. <laughs> and while he was down here, I had found them. Oh, Lord. How old, and, how old are the pictures? Well, we've only been married two years. <laughs> Could you describe a couple of the pictures for us? Um, well, a couple are, I have Victoria's Secrets, and then I have a couple Walmart just cotton stuff so they're just it's just a variety of pictures now what is he wearing is he wearing tops and bottoms my thongs <laughs> who, who took these pictures uh, that's what i want to know <laughs> uh, you don't know who took them so i don't know who took them so, so, is he, is, so did i hear you say he's just wearing thongs well i don't think his chest is wider than mine so i don't think he could wear my bras <laughs> and what Otherwise, kind of what kind of poses are they Oh, he is all over the place. He does. Have you ever seen Seinfeld where George Costanza's on the couch? He's got his arm over his head and his one leg up. I mean, this is hideous. All right. Now, Can you I be a little know. more specific. Are you capable? Not particularly. Yeah. And he's a hair. He's a hairy guy too. He's like. Um, no, you're lying. We had to cut her. Yeah. We had to cut her loose. Yeah. Um, we have to break, but we're gonna. Continue this. We got three keepers so far. Hey, Steve. Stephen, the guy who alleges that he got oral when he was seventeen. When he was seventeen, Steve. Yes. Stay on the line. You're a finalist. Okay. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Then we have Dwayne. 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 Yeah. Now this is the guy who says he uses his wife dildo, his wife's dildo on his no no while he rubs one out. Okay. Yeah. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, Vitre. But maybe the leader, if it's true, Ivy. Uh -huh. Is Ivy. <laughs> Ivy, hi baby. Hello, sweetheart. Ivy, who is in in a lesbian relationship, right? Yeah. And uh, had the you know the uh, the big uh, turkey baster thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, told her. Uh, what's your Ivy? What's your partner's name? Uh, Elizabeth. And told, told Elizabeth she went down to the local sperm bank. When actually it was like some guy like Joe Ardinger. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, yes, that is a very good comparison, and that's the reason that uh, he is sometimes in and out of favor. That's nice. All right, hold on. Nice. nice, nice, nice. Hold on, hold on a second, uh, guys, uh, gals. I know, no, listen, just guys. I know you can do better. Mm -hmm. We've got some good ones. Amen. But I know you can do better. Right. Uh, phone number eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Hello, Sean Hannity. For my, this is the first time I've ever called you, and I'm glad to be listening to you every day right after the Don and Mike show. And Thank I you. just think that you would make a perfect guest on their show. Tell Don and Mike, anytime uh, they want me, I'd be glad to come. <laughs> Hello. The Don and Mike show. Huzzah! The Don and Mike show. Let me see, uh, still to come on the show here. Uh, very soon, the BJ Queen. Also, uh, her tips for giving a good BJ. And uh, will she be demonstrating on Joe Arminger? I don't know. And uh, I think, does she drive a car in Dundalk? I think uh, the return of either Tobacco Road or Oxfig and Latoura. Uh, Excellent. And uh, tomorrow we'll give away another trip to Las Vegas. And, uh, oh yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. Maybe, maybe Craig Wilson. Yes, if he's gay enough. And did you... Promise me something for this week, uh, some sort of nudity. Nudity for the Las Vegas trip. Just thought I'd remind you. Very good. Woo! And now, back to 
What my wife doesn't know won't hurt her. We got a couple of good ones. Let's uh, see what's happening here. Hello, Dynamite Show. Hey, Dynamite. How's it going? Howdy. What's your name? Uh, Steve. I'm I live in Laurel. All right, Steve on WJFK. Steve, what doesn't your wife know? Okay, my wife and I have been married uh, eight months. We got married in July of last year, and her father is a alcoholic. She doesn't see him. He's you know, hold on. Excuse me. Now. You know, I'm going on about three hours sleep. What does a guy got to do to get a beverage around here? <laughs> Did, didn't I ask you to ask Joe? I called Lisa and asked Joe. What's a guy got to do to get a beverage around here? Hold on a second. Who do you have to F? Hello? Hey, uh, we were busy working the funds for the contest. He's getting it right now. He's on his way back. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You need your, uh, your caffeine, especially today. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm dying. You need your fluid. I'm dying. dying. Here's the guy that's just dying for the beverage. Mike caught me this morning, Boggy, like Arnold. <laughs> we, get really about, tired. Yeah. we were talking about 24. Oh, and I, and I said something like, <laughs> and the Kimbawa. It's, and it's not the line. It should be crazy and all that. They put her in the crazy situation. Yeah, you said you said yeah. she's always... I'm not a fan of her being in all those crazy situations. And I said, okay, Arnold. It's and, like <laughs> the crazy positions. I came down. I waited like 40 minutes to get a cup of coffee. I sat down and all I hear is Mike say, and then there's the mountain lion. Then the mountain lion and then the guy <laughs> shoots the person in the store. And you say... I'm very angry because I want to see 24. <laughs> and, this, and it just made no sense, and we were laughing like idiots in the airport. And I, yeah. But Mike was right. He buzzed me. I was talking like Arnold, you know, because we say, I was saying, well, at least tonight, you know, 24 is on. Right. Except, God, I hate the crazy situations. Mm -hmm. The goofy that, situations for the Kimbawa. That, that his daughter's in all the time. All right. Ah, there's that beverage. Thank you, Robbie. No Let me get back to this guy. Hello, friend. Good friend. Hey, Donna Mike. Hi, friend. Let me just... Ah, uh, there's the ice going in. Don is fixing his cocktail right now. If anybody is curious at home, since this is radio, he's pouring in Diet Vanilla Coke. That's what you hear right now. Stopping that. Love now he's pouring in mm. about six fingers of oh, I wish. Vox Vodka. I do wish. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Steve, what, what doesn't your wife know? Anyway, her, her dad's a deadbeat. Before we got married, it was the biggest... Yeah, i, I got to stop you, Steve. Yeah. i got to stop you right there because you, you lose complete credibility. You've been married for eight months, and, and you're already dissing on her dad like that. No, it's just I've, 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 we've dated for, for six years since I was 19 years old. He was in jail when... We started dating, and he, he just, I mean, anyway, he was out when we were married. He skipped parole, and he had, hadn't been caught, and he called her every once in a while. Hey, you know, all right, go ahead. I mean, she feels guilty. She she loves him or everything. I don't understand, but before the wedding was a big deal. He wanted to walk her down the aisle. Her stepdad ended up doing it. What is it that she doesn't know? Um, Before the wedding, about two weeks before, my dad and I, we made a call to the PG County Police and we had him picked up because he had a warrant because he was on parole. And he never went to his parole hearings and I knew he had a warrant for his arrest. So. Yeah. We, we don't involve ourselves. You know, it might, might be true, but who knows? Yeah, it might very well be true. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It was true. Hello. Uh, who's Hello. this? Hi. How you doing? Hi. We're doing great. What's your name? Brand Con. Hi. Uh, Alice Park. All right. Thank you on WJFK. What is it that your wife doesn't know? Well, I've been married for 19 years. Congratulations. And, thank you very much. And uh, my wife is from Europe, and she's Catholic, and I'm Jewish. Right. But Christmas is very important to her. And every Christmas, her parents send a very large box of presents to the house. Well, about two years ago, I was home having lunch one day in October when the present box arrived. And being a good dad and not wanting to leave it in the hallway, I took it up and put it in the attic. Right. Behind some things and hid it for mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Good. But also being insensitive, I forgot about it. <laughs> so, as if every week went by, her parents kept calling and asking if the box arrived. And I never remembered about the box being up there. And eventually, uh, Christmas came and went without the box. And after Christmas, they put a claim. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Shocking. What a crime. Shocking. Well, I hope she doesn't divorce you for that one. What a crime. He'll send you to Vegas soon. Mm -hmm. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah, uh, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no, sorry, no, I didn't know sorry that. Rob. Different Rob. Hi. <laughs> You're on the air. Yeah, I, um, I, uh, 
Uh, I got a, something on a move out, and it's an adult toy. And I, w- I uh, brought it home. And actually, wait, 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 what, what, what is a move out? Oh, I, I have a cleaning business, okay. and basically, I they hire me to move out uh, people who bail on their leases uh-huh. or. And um, oh, hi, okay. Joe. Hello. <laughs> no, no. I was okay. Just okay. Go ahead. Hi to one of our employees. All right, Joe's so not just a name; it's an idea. So you're cleaning out one of your properties, and you find you find what? I found a a, a big purple dildo. All right. Okay. And I brought it home. But one of the things that amazed me about it was it smelled like grapes. It was like built into the dildo. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I put it in our. We got a compartment under the bed that has all our toys, and I put it in there. And so I, actually, I just totally forgot about it because I mean, it has all your life. your love toys. Oh yeah, <laughs> the you whole and your arsenal. Wife. You and your wife. Okay. Yeah. We've been married for like 15 years, so. But anyway, well, that um, smells good. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, it does not. Uh, we were fooling around one night, and um, yeah, yeah, what I happened? grabbed it, and I used it on her, and it turned out the next two days she got a nasty infection, and she went to the doctor, and one of her ovaries had turned like rock hard, and she had to go on a series of antibiotics to to clear it up. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What's funny about <laughs> you know the the dildo did it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How do you know the dildo did it? Well, I didn't wash it. I'm just assuming it did because you know I I don't know why she'd get a nasty infection. Like that. I mean, you can get it, you can get infections <laughs> and whatnot o- from other things. <laughs> what if her ovaries turn rock hard? That's the yeah. odd part. Actually, it was a good thing because she was an infomaniac after that. I think I mean, that those kids that eat rock candy, <laughs> oh, pop rock. Yeah. Imagine that if you one of those kids that eat. Go, mm, what is that ovary? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh. Who wants ovary? Oh, it's rock hard. It's, mom, mom, more ovary. It's the ovary man. Oh, rock hard. No, you know what? I think, um, no. No, we'll pass. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Bye-bye. Sorry. Bye-bye. Rob. Hello, Don and Mike show. Who's this? Oh, it's uh, Ivy the Lesbian. Hold on a second. Hi. Uh, Don and Mike. William. Hey, Don, how you going? Guys? What do we have for William? <laughs> William, <laughs> William, where are you from? Um, Alexandria. W-J-F-K-F-M. That's right. J-F-K. K-F-K-F-M. That's right. F and J-F-K. J-F-M. Get, talk get... that rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Dumb. Dumb slogan. Don't use it, please. Uh, <laughs> William, what is it that your wife doesn't know? All right. Well... She and I take showers together frequently, and a lot, of time, a lot of times she'll wash my back, a lot of times I'll wash her back. Well, so one time we was in the shower, my back was facing the water, and her back was facing me, I was washing her back off. And I had to relieve myself, and so I relieved myself accidentally on her. And now... Wait, 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 she didn't notice... No, because the water was coming down on her so back as well. So warm she water. Yeah. So she didn't know. So, but now. Yeah, I guess if I guess you, really the only way, if you're in that situation, the only way really to have her not notice like the color would be to like hit her on the back. Did right, you, that's uh, what I do. It. So I hit her on the back that time, but now I do it all the time because I know she doesn't know it. So a lot of times I wash her back and the warm water her back. What about the smell? It just goes right down the drain. Plus, she use like a fragrance soap. She never notices it. She never so, notices You know what? Yeah. You know, that is a, that's an answer right there. Mm-hmm. I said, how come she doesn't know we, we use a fragrance soap? Mm-hmm. Do you wash her rock hard ovaries? <laughs> no, I don't wash her rock hard ovaries. So, so when you're in the shower with your wife, mm-hmm. she's yeah. in front of you. Yeah. You're behind her. Right. And she, and she's got the, the, the shower head coming down. <laughs> the water is hitting her. Now, if she doesn't know, and you did it one time and it didn't get caught, and the, first many, time I did it, the first time I did it was an accident, and then I was like, oh, she doesn't know. How many times like, would you say you've done it? Probably about maybe 26. 
I do it all the time. Oh, I tell just... my friends about it. He cracks up. I do it now, all the time. Over two now, dozen times. Now, when you do it, uh, I have to be careful because so many dumb disc jockeys is coming. You've gotten us in trouble. Do you do you lift it up to aim, or do you it, mainly? I actually, I take aim and shoot. With, I, right, I, right I, at her, right at her back, like where? Right at her back. So, so the it's... water, the water hits directly on her back. I don't want to go to the leg because I figure no water can hit it. I completely believe this it. guy. I completely believe this so guy. And like, <laughs> you're standing behind her. Well, you must have a very strong stream. Let me say that you're standing behind her because you you got to be shooting up. <laughs> Right and, right, and you let it go, and all of a sudden you got your stream coming in, and it's... Do you make sure you soap her up a lot on the back before you right, do that? Right, right. That's mm -hmm. how it starts. I usually soap her up real good. I'm washing the back of her neck and her shoulders and her back, and then I just have to go. Mm -hmm. You know, even if he's lying, it's a great story. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you go number one on your wife's back. Yeah. When, when's the last... You've done it 26 times, and she doesn't know. I when? just did it this past Thursday. The guy I was riding with, that's... I was telling him about it this day. He said, you that's... have to call. That's I what just I wanted did it this to know. past Thursday. When's wow. the last time you did it? Saturday. Saturday. This past Saturday. <laughs> Tough to argue with this one, Don. Yeah. Wow. Hold on. We have someone who says this has been done before. Hold on a second. Bobby. Yes. Bobby Hill. Bobby. Yes. What do you mean this has been done before? Someone won, won, won the same contest with that before. I remember it. Not on our show. No, not here. You're the only show I ever listened to between this time slot. None of us remember it. No, no. we never had a uh, At least one might, of us We would. might have had something that involved that substance, but uh, never this specific thing. Never a guy who was in the shower and... Where did you hear it? Oh, Don and Mike, you're the only show I ever listened to this uh, time. You know, right. Robbie, as the de facto historian, pipe down, as the de facto historian of the show... The only thing that's sort of close to this is years ago about athlete's foot. And I know, care athlete's foot, but that's about it for yeah, the shower, I think. It. No. I, I remember within the last couple of years, I remember the same story. Yeah. Question your mighty intellect, sir. Is there any chance you're wrong? All right, I hung up on him. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, can I speak to the fellas? Yeah, you're talking to the fellas. Hi. What's up, Don? Hey. Yo, yo, Mike. Hi. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. I, my lady just called me. She told me to turn y'all on. She was talking about it exactly right now. And that's a funny thing. She knows when we go in the shower, she knows. She's like, you better not do it. And she'll turn her back on me. And as soon as she, know, as soon as she turns around, it's just Niagara Falls. I can't, I can't hold it. You know what I'm saying? Is it a turn on for you? It, it's not really a turn on. It's, Maybe a little bit. It's more of a laugh. Hey, it's a lady. Hey, it's a lady. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, it would be great. For, I mean, talk about. Now I don't shower with Frida. We, we just, maybe not uh, before. We just we don't. But can you imagine the fun? Especially, thank you, my friend. <laughs> especially if, for whatever reason, pardon the pun, you pissed off at your wife, <laughs> and you stand there, and you really. You, I, I completely believe. Uh, I think we're William gonna, from Alexandria. Yeah. We're going to go with William as our first choice. If William is not uh, available to produce his wife, we will go with Ivy. Ivy, the lesbian who uh, was artificially inseminated by a friend that her spouse doesn't like. Then we're going to keep Stephen, who got oral from a car in a truck once. Right. And Duane, who uses his wife's dildo on his no-no. As he rubs one out. Yeah. So, I mean, we got more than enough calls. Yeah. If you're one of the people who we just named, please stay online because we'll have a prize for you anyway. Very good. Uh, however, let me uh, make sure that uh, William... Uh, now, William? Yes. We got to go to break. Do you think? Okay. Do you think your wife is going to be available at, at a phone number for us to get her? Yeah, I gave you a call her her cell phone number. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Very all good, because right. it's imperative that we speak with William's wife. Okay, hold on. And the last time you did this to her was? This past Saturday. This past Saturday. Right. And remember, the total was 26 times. <laughs> See, that's another thing that makes me believe it. Right. Is that if, if I was doing that, mm -hmm. I'd count too. Absolutely. I'd count 26 two. times. We will be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Okay, I get it. You're joking. Well, I've got a sense of humor. I laugh at Tony Danza. Of course, if you aren't joking, I feel bad and I apologize. I laugh at Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. At Tony Danza. All right, that's it. The Don and Mike Show. 
They're extra smart because they've got extra brain juice. Don and Mike. Sure do need uh, need some phone numbers here, kids. Um, for we yum, we we've yum. Had, we've had a lot of people calling saying that they do that. Hmm, interesting. To their wives, that who knowingly knows? or unknowingly is knowingly. it all unknowingly? No, it's all knowingly. Wow. Me on the wives' part? No, it, uh, the, the husbands do it, and the wives don't know. Oh, okay. Wow. So let's uh, let's see if we can give away a trip to Las Vegas. What my wife doesn't know won't hurt her. Now we have great contestants. We got this guy right here, Steve. No, no, he's he's gone. Uh, we have Ivy, who's lesbian. Who's Yes. The, the, the She's the runner-up right now. The lesbian child that she had with a lesbian partner right. was fathered by a, a, a guy that the, the other lesbian doesn't like. He doesn't know. And it's a lie, right? Yeah, uh, that's, that's basically it. Okay, hold on a second. Then you have uh, Dwayne. He uses the vibrator on his no-no uh, while he, you uh, know. Uh, Dwayne? <laughs> hold on a second. Mm. I'm getting all kinds of calls like this. Matt. Yeah, Don. Yeah. Um, it was about two Junes ago or so. You did the same contest, and a guy called in with the same thing, and you said it wasn't thick enough. And you went ahead and just cut him off the show. You know, why do all you junior G-men... You want to get F our thing up, so if we didn't do it then, we're doing it now. But oh, all right, that's hey, that's fair. That's yes, fair. That's the end. That's the end. I, I really don't remember anybody ever calling with anything like I don't that either, b- but... before. And, and frankly, I, I mean, really, you, you're saying what, what's the chronology of this, Matt? Uh, it was about two Junes or Julys ago. It was right How before the How in the name started. of Jesus do you remember? Two Junes ago, because all I do something, is something that we we didn't even keep that we threw back. It's because all I do is sit by a copy machine and push buttons and listen to you guys from twelve to four every day. All right, but listen, here's here's where you lose. I just don't believe you that it was that that it was that thick though, I and mean, it, it couldn't have been the same thing. And the thing is, maybe the guy, maybe you're right. You know, maybe they're right. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you guys are sleep deprived. No, hold on a second. All right, maybe the guy who called didn't tell it. In a compelling, believable fashion, maybe as I'd... this guy William seems to be doing. Right. And I think we sort of glossed over a fact in all, all our zeal here. What time do you listen to the show? Uh, from 12 to 4. Which means you live in? California. Right. And what part? Bakersfield, California. Oh. Ah. He's not from Sacramento, Rob. So. Not Sacramento. You know what? My Congratulations. Friend. Yeah, but that's what, to this guy in that region... That's what's important. Exactly. Not, not the bit we're doing. That was well, that's funny. Any crack, it's any a flaw. flaw. That's what you want to do. But you know, that's what he's into. He ain't into the funniness of the show. No. I be, uh, maybe he thinks he's helping. I'm, I'm oh, trying to help. Oh no. Oh my goodness, you are sleep deprived. Let me <laughs> know. Let me just say helping. though, if the, if somebody called with a similar premise before and we turned it down, it was only because. They did a bad job of selling it. Okay. Yeah, or I think you might have had something better too. So no, no, it was it was not even the, it was not even similar. <laughs> Matt. Yes. No, it wasn't similar. Sorry about that. You're not, so, now you're, so now you're admitting you're wrong. No, I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm saying. Uh, then why'd you apologize? Because Mike sounded uh, sympathetic. What do you mean I sounded sympathetic? You, you apologized because Mike sounded sympathetic. Yeah, that he was down and didn't feel right. Well, I mean, do you understand what we're doing here? Yes, I do. You listen all the time. Then why do you have to just F it up? I was why? just going to cre- no, correct no, that other guy. Why? Why, why, why? I ask you guys all the time. No no reason. No, there's, I, you know what? I want more. Okay, this is a very boring job here, and I've never got through to you guys before. So you get through on, like, this mindless technicality, even though we got a guy that we are, you know... He was talking about his friends laughing at him. Don and I were laughing we at him. We were all entertained Everybody by was it. entertained by that. And you got to throw this thing in. It's like, it's like going to a movie that's a good comedy, like something about Mary, yep. and saying, I saw the little blip in the uh, upper right-hand uh, corner when they're going to change the reels, and standing up in the middle of it and say, you know, that's, in the, that's on the left side instead of the right side. No, I've never came into contact with that. 
You've never <laughs> seen I've, I, I've seen the blip on the right side, yeah. I've never seen it on the left side. He though. doesn't get it. You don't get it, do you? No, I get it. No, you really don't no, get the no, joke. Don't. Here's the fa Here's what Mike is trying to say, and he is sleep deprived. What he is trying I am to not. What he's trying to say is, <laughs> f you and your family too. Okay. Really, because you're really not a fun man. You're not a guy that <laughs> likes comedy. We're doing we're doing a show, and even if you we, like nerd nicks, I bet you like you like little like detailed puzzles and things like that. You even don't like comedy. Even if someone had called two years ago and we had said, ah, not thick enough, it's thick enough today. So why call? Buzz, and do you have that little dictionary that you keep around? I do, yeah. The word humorless. I'm sure it is in the dictionary. Oh, it's without humor, but let's see what's in here. But there's probably a little more detail to it. But thanks for that. Gosh. So how are things at the copy machine? Oh, they're great. Now everyone's going on and turn on the radios, and I can't even hear you guys. <laughs> but do you understand what the word humorless means? Yes, I do. Buzz? And yes. I have been told I am dry sometimes. Dry, dry is a is no, a high compliment. Dry would indicate that you you know Dennis you have a dry Miller. sense of humor precisely. Dennis yeah. Miller is dry. He has a dry sense of humor. Buzz, humor is in here, but not humorless, since it's just an extension of the word humor. What does humor mean? Because humorless okay. would be the opposite. Would be without humor. Well, it means uh, to comply with the wishes or mood of, but the one you want to know about means a quality that appeals to a sense of the ludicrous, a keen perception of the ludicrous, comical or amusing entertainment. And what you're doing, and, and that's I'm glad you read that, because what, what Matt here is doing mm -hmm. is he's getting so obsessed with the details of, of the nuts and bolts of this show, which are meaningless to 99.9% .9 of our listening audience. Hello. Hello. And you, but you still dig it, don't you? You, you, uh, you dig that you got through. You dig that it's on the air. Because that's what you're about. You're not about laughing. You're about, I don't know what you're about. I'm about laughing. No. Let me ask you something. Do you, do you call TV shows or is it just us? I've never called you guys before. I've never I had a ring it. before. Oh, I doubt that. No, I'm serious. I've never had a ring before. All right, well, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and just say that you're calling because this was an idea you heard that we threw away two years ago. Uh, but but today it's good enough. We like it today. Okay, that, yeah, that's exactly why I called. So, so, so what? what? <laughs> I was just letting you know because you told that other guy he was wrong earlier. I told what guy he was wrong? The guy that called and, and mentioned that he heard this a couple years ago. You, you realize, really, what you've done here. Wasted valuable air time. No, 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 it's, no, it's worse than that. You've derailed us. You've really taken all, you've sucked whatever funniness was out of this you thing. You've the show. I mean, I don't doubt we're going to get it right back, because we are going to call the guy's wife, and it's right. still funny, but, but really. Right now, you've bummed out 6.2 million people. Wow. I've never been responsible for that. You're Captain Suck. <laughs> That's a cool wrestling name, actually, for a luchador. Yeah, that's really cool. Ah, there we yeah. go. Okay, now there, we go. Now there's, there, there we go. Now we're in the wheelhouse. The nerd, the nerd, the land of nerd. Mm -hmm. Listen, there is a reason that God has chosen me and Mike and Buzz and Rob to be here, God. speaking into microphones. <laughs> the chosen one. To you. God. There's a reason. The first time you've ever admitted that, Tom. <laughs> there is a reason that God has you Cats out of the bag. at a copy machine. Okay. Hey, do you, do you have a co-worker nearby? Uh, yeah, there's like three of them. And I got news for you. Those other guys, this copy job, it's a stepping stone. Yes, it is. They're on their way to being Fortune 500 guys. I doubt that. You know, and I don't want to talk to one of your friends. I just want to talk to, you know, pick out somebody that's just at random there that we can talk to. Okay, here's the guy right here. What's up? Hi, who's this? Uh, Tom. Tom, this guy Matt, is he a tool? What do you mean a tool? A tool. Well, he's all good. He's all good. Yeah. The room Sorry, full Tom. of them. Yeah, I don't think we we need somebody that's uh, that's a little more capable. A customer. If there's anybody in this office, a customer. <laughs> give the phone back to the tool. Okay, I'll give it back. He didn't understand that. A no. tool. Hello. Yes. Well. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let me give a plug to your business, uh, Retard Copying. Uh, That's down the street. Right. Thank you for calling. All right. Great.
Thank you very much. Have a nice day. What an a hole. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Hold on. Don't hang up yet. Hold Stay on. with us. All right. On. Just a second. Hold on. Getting the number? Yeah. I'm going to jot something down here. This is a three two seven. <laughs> what is the business, Matt? Uh, it's called Blueprint Service. Blueprint Service. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. I'll have some fun after this break. Um, <laughs> let's go to William. 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 Uh, William. Hey, Don and Mike. All right, we're going to call your wife right now. Okay. We have to get her permission to go on the air. Her name is Linda, right? Yeah. yeah. Lovely Linda. There we go. <laughs> he got something to tell you. <laughs> Hold on. When it rings. Hi, Don. Oh, hi, Rob. All right. There is Rob right there. <laughs> Rob will clear the appearance with Linda. Yes. And then William will have the pleasure of telling his wife what she doesn't know. Robbie, what are you doing? You got her? Okay, yeah. Ready to go. Oh, here we go. All right, we have the lovely Linda on the line. Hold on. Linda! Hello, Linda? Hello. Hi, you're on the air with the Don and Mike Show, and we have your husband, William, here. William. Hey, boo. Hey. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Hey. William has something he would like to tell you. And then, uh, uh, William, William... Take all the time you need. And, and okay. remember the guidelines that you've been given, like, with, okay. you know, okay. what you can say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, boo, you know, um, well, you know how when you and I take a shower together, and um, you, you wash my back off first, and then I turn you around, and I wash your back. I put the soap on your back, and, you know, I rub your feet and your legs and your thigh, and put soap all over you. Well, probably about six months ago, I had to go to the bathroom. And um, I accidentally relieved myself on your back, and you didn't notice. Can he say that? I think you got to say just you went number one. Okay. Otherwise, they're gonna censor that. Okay. Oh, I went. Um, well, when I was washing your back off and the water was coming down your back, I went on number one accidentally on your back, and you never noticed it. So I, afterwards, I thought it was the funniest thing. So I went and told Rick about it. He was cracking up about it. So the next time we got in the shower, I tried it again, and you never noticed it. And I've, I've done it numerous times since then. But this weekend, when you were over and we, and we took a shower Saturday, I did it again, and you still never noticed. And every time I tell Rick about it, he just cracks up about it. Hold on a second. When she was over? Is this your wife? Oh, my fiance. We're getting married. I call her my wife, but we're getting married in two months. Oh, in August. Well, that's close. That's well. Yeah, right. that's all right. Really. I'm matter. sorry. Yeah, I, I'm still calling my wife. Okay, very good. How many times have you gone number one on 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 her back while she's been in the shower? Exactly, 26. It's Saturday, May 26. Well, Saturday was there was 25 before that. 26 times. <laughs> Honey, Linda, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Linda, any uh, any comments uh, from you? Not that I would say on the air. I might end up in a little bit of trouble. Were you ever aware that anything was uh, any, anything was a little unusual in the shower? No. Mm. Yeah. You know, he will never take a shower with me again. You know, he really has to aim good to hit your back. Oh, don't be mad. I would think he would like hit your butt, maybe. She's uh, she seems to be uh, taking away his showering privileges. Yes, and some others. Oh dear. 26 times? Oh, oh, over how long a period of time? Probably well, when I just moved over here, so probably since about October. Hey, Linda, did you ever suspect anything? Did you ever just think no. maybe something was wrong? No, because I take extremely hot showers. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good answer. Did you know, do you know this guy, Rick? Yes. Yeah, well, Rick thinks it's a hoot. That's almost exactly once a week. Oh. That is fine for Rick. Hey, Linda, you sound like you're upset. What do you think could possibly make this right? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing at all? He needs multiply 26 by 26, and that's the next time he'll take a shower with me or do anything else. Boo. Well, let me tell you that your, uh, your fiancé has won a trip for two to Las Vegas. See, boo? Mm-hmm. Courtesy of Veramax. Is that better? Four nights, five days hotel, round trip airfare. Veramax sexual pleasure and performance enhancer. It really works. Call 1-800-TRY-VMAX to get your free supply. 
or to find a retailer near you. Hello? I'm here. Yes. I'm glad you're both still there. So, so you see, all of this, Linda, and I know you're upset, but all of this was done for a trip to Las Vegas. So now you can go shower together in Las Vegas. Nope. I love Las Vegas, but he's sleeping on a floor somewhere else. Wow. <laughs> Will you ever shower with him again? Nope. Will you take a bath with him? Nope. Well, that'd be even more dangerous. <laughs> she was Ooh, I love you. I love you. Uh-huh. I love you. <laughs> oh. It's Come not going on. over tell, well. Tell him you love him. I don't think we're going to get that out of here. You you know, here's the important part. Will you go to Las Vegas with him? Yeah. There you go. Very you good. Go. Love you. Uh huh. We'll talk about that too. <laughs> okay. Wow. Just think on your beautiful ebony skin. Mm hmm. Twenty six times. <laughs> you know, stuff's been coming out. You know, if it wasn't bad for uh, for William, it's 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 even worse for him now. Twenty six times. And he, t he told us that he has to aim to hit you in the middle of the back. Hey, you know, we had that report that it kills athletes' foot, though. Yeah. It sure does. Yep. Why didn't he just put a dartboard up there while he was at it? Oh, dear. You got a lot. You know, you're going to, I think you're going to be paying this, uh, paying this back for a while, William. Yeah. Hey, honey, honey, I got one last question. When you go to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. do you want to stay at the Golden Nugget? No <laughs> comment. <laughs> 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 Oh man! Oh, I lo I long for the days when we would lie to people and tell them they were on hold, and we actually listened. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. Those were the days. Until we got sued. Until the company turned yellow. We, I love you. Who? Mm -hmm. I love you. He loves you, Linda. Hey, Linda. Yeah. Don't be pissed off. World where owning a radio was strictly forbidden. Oh One man found a way to bring good news to his people. Buzz me. He made it up. Hey, Linda, uh, really? It's seriously? It's, it's a pretty tinkler situation. Hey, Linda? Uh huh? When you go to Vegas, and I mean this, you got to check out the fountains in front of the Bellagio. <laughs> <laughs> they're big. They're big, gigantic Absolutely. flumes, flumes mm -hmm. of water. Be wonderful. You'll love it. Hold, hold on. Hold on, please. All right. And, uh, well, William, uh, enjoy, my friend. Thank you, guys. Okay. Hold. You guys have a great time in Vegas. It's a great city. You're have in fun. for a good time. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Buzz. Yes. Buzz, what is your lead story today? Our lead story today is about Britney Spears' big bust. Hey, you're number one, Buzz. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Stay tuned, you're, everybody. You're golden. Stay tuned. Well, you know, Joe did a fine job running the board while we were gone, but everything is re uncued today. Everything is goddamn uncued today. Is it even holding? You know, it might be locked up. Is, is it locked up? It might just be jammed. Is there a leak? Hold on. Do I have a moment? Mad? Do I have a moment to make a phone call? Um, we really shouldn't. All right. <laughs> well, this is much better for news and yeah, comments coming, yeah. up, coming up on the Don and Mike show. Don and Mike show. Hey, welcome back. That was very <laughs> professional, of course. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike show. What's the word for playing crackpot? The Don and Mike show. The writing is delicious. The Don and Mike Show. Hi, Buzz. Currently now, Buzz News and Comment brought to you by Bureau Max. Yeah. Extra pleasure. Ooh. Performance enhancer. Someone called for a doctor? Doctor developed clinically tested Viramax work. Candidate right aid. GNC and other select retailers try it today. Viramax. One Triple A try. VMAX. And now here is. Buzz. <laughs> Important. What do you got? This just in? I'm going to need some sad music, Rob. Well, no. Give me something very sad. Uh -huh. We have sad news. Sad news from our home station, WJFK. Oh, dear. To WJFK staff from Julie Pullman. Julie is the sales manager. Right. Hey, guys. It is with mixed emotions. I have to announce Deborah Dean... Is no longer associated with WJFK. Oh no. Deborah's worked at WJFK a long time, and we wish her well. Yep. Deborah has been a mainstay 
and we will miss her. Mm -hmm. Oh, where's when's the going away party? Let me say, Mike, it's not on here. I'm throwing it. Right, and and it's it's just for two people, right? No. <laughs> Everybody's invited. It's a Botox party. <laughs> Everybody's invited. Oh God! Come on and get your Botox shots. Yay! At Deborah Dean's going away party. Bye bye. Hey, it's a lady. Anyway, well, she's a big supporter of this show. Yes, she will be missed. They are dropping like flies. My right God, what's wow. going on? Here? Anyway, Buzz. Yes, hi, Don and Mike. Hi, hi. Uh, Britney's big bust. The New York restaurant opened by pop diva Britney Spears is not only out of hey, business. It's a lady. Not only out of business, it's strapped with nearly a half million dollars in unpaid bills. It's a cautionary tale about the rough and tumble restaurant business, but this case was made worse by legal troubles, bad food, and bad service. Hey, Brittany. Don't tell me they're just set, like a lot of our audiences stand out there like that. Hey, Brittany. Oh my God. Okay. So let's hurry off. Seriously. Hey, Brittany. I'll tell you something, honey. This is retarded. I know, honey. They told me they were going to do a vamp. Can I tell you something? Oh. Brittany. Oh no. What are they doing? Hey, Brittany. Let me see. Oh, my band are doing it. I know. I know. Brittany, give me a second. I thought they were going to... I know. Well, I'm just not going to stand out. I thought they were going to... I want to tell you something important. Brittany. Okay. She said the F word, okay. Don. Brittany. You retarded. What are you retarded? Brittany, listen. When you were going out with Justin, when you took a shower together... <laughs> he went number one on you. Hey, it's a lady. 26 times. <laughs> All this uh, information about... On your face. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. All this information about her restaurant, according to the Smoking Gun website, it has the papers from the restaurant's April 2nd filing for bankruptcy. The website says the restaurant owes the electric company over fifty grand and the New York tax man nearly $46,000. Brittany's restaurant, known as Nyla, has about two dozen unpaid creditors who now may never see their money. That is a great website. we got to have them on again. Yeah, they're good. Hey, Robbie, did you get a chance to ask uh, him about doing this bit tomorrow? Haven't yet. Okay. We'll get, we, let me know. I will. we got another trip to uh, Vegas tomorrow. Working on a winner. Working on a, a good bit uh, if Wendell will play along. Very good. Well, what's he at? Let me just call him. Is he back there at the... Uh, he's here. I know he's, he's been playing around. Yeah, is he at here. the wood shop? Let's find out what's... <laughs> yeah. Is he in the blacksmith's shop? I think so. I think so. Smoot. Our engineer, Wendell Hall. Oh, Wendell. Smooth. Wendell. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, Wendell Hall. The pipes, the pipes are calling. Well, he ain't answering. Try. Try what? Might be, might be Try VMAX. Try eight, When we're nine, listening eight, to Buzz's newscast. 898, eight, okay? Eight, nine, oh, 891. You know, you know, Friedman quit. When? Oh, is that a secret? That I know of. Yeah, the chief engineer quit, too. What? Hey, Wendell? Yeah. Hey, it's Donna Mike. Hi. Hey, tomorrow, um, if you have some time during the show. For what? You've never done this before. If we played Make Wendell Laugh? No, we've not. Would you? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're the man. Yeah. Vice Smoot. Hi. He's in. What's up with him, though? What, call, what was that about? I don't know. What number did we just call? 891. Mm -hmm. You ask him what was up. Yo. That Wendell, is everything all right? Uh, give me eight minutes and I'll tell you all about it. Oh, good, I will. Okay. What, are Thanks. you going through something? Huh? He, he said eight minutes, uh, so we'll find out. Nothing to do with us, right? Huh? It's nothing to do with us, right? Everything cool with us? Um, Friday show? With the uh, with the phone problem, with the echo. Oh, is that what you're dealing with? Uh-huh. Well, you shouldn't be in the middle of that. Well. Well, we're sorry. You know, it's, uh, it's all right. Oh, okay. All right. We didn't yell at you, dude. Um. Somebody telling you we yelled at you? Do you want to hear it? Do I want to hear it? Yeah. Well, you got a message? No, you want to hear it? Hear what? You yelling at me. What am I yelling at you? During Friday's show? Yeah. What did I say? Uh, something about uh, call Jay and tell him that it's a new record, that uh, Joe and the engineers have taken eight minutes to fix the phone. 
I'm, I'm confused. Well, Wendell, here was my understanding. During Friday's show, you were not available since Friday you were doing a remote for another radio show that no longer works at this radio station. Right. So it had nothing to do with with you. The the bitch in the whole situation, I hope you guys understand, was the fact that, you know, our engineers were somewhere else. Wendell is very sensitive. It wasn't you guys making that decision. We don't think that you guys just decided for fun that you'd go over and do that. And we knew that you were going to work at the other radio station, which I still don't get. Then that's what pissed Better. us off. That the synergy. Yeah. Yeah. How, how come all the synergy in this company is with everything leaving WJFK and nothing coming in? Well, because we're a very giving station. Need a morning show? Gotcha. That, so, yep. so I understand that you went to do the remote with with the other guys. Right. But then the other engineer, he takes the rest of the day off to go to a wedding. The same day that he quit, I think. No. So, well, not the same day that he quit. No. Uh, you drove him out of here before that. Oh, oh, Wendell. Wendell, Wendell, Wendell. Wendell, why are you so mad at us? Oh, this is two now. This is what? This is two of my bosses you've worn out now. No, it's not us. Wendell, there are a hell of a lot more reasons that guys leave here than, than the Don and Mike show. So, Wendell, you're being yelled at now about the technical problems we had on Friday? Hey, Alan just wanted to, an email explaining what happened when, and so I went through and timed it, and it wasn't eight minutes, it was... Uh, you know what, let me call him up. I'll handle this. And furthermore, I think it needs to be said that Wendell, who was not even technically at WJFK, mm -hmm. called me on my cell phone and walked us through the fix. Uh -huh. Let, let me his, call him. I know, actually, Joe managed, managed to do the fix on his, hey, Wendell, was let, on his initiative. Wendell, let, let me call him. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow you can play the game? Oh, yeah. All right. And when the, in, in all fairness, too, I mean, if Mike did leave, it was there were certainly other reasons than just this show. Am I right? You have to ask Mike about that. All, all right, right, we'll see. Okay, fine. We'll see. Bye. 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 See, the deal on Friday is we're doing a remote in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and there's no engineer available. Yeah. To help with the technical problems we're having. Not their fault, but it's not right. Right. So now the general manager is yelling because I went over the general manager's head and called the the chief of uh, uh, vice president of Monkey Monkey. Now on line one. Oh, come Infinity on. Broadcasting. Come on. JFK Radio. Pick up your goddamn phone. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe this is not the best of times to be doing all of this. Uh, is this him calling back? Hold on. Hello? No, I was going to tell you, he's probably on his cell phone. He's probably doing some more synergy. Okay. In the cluster. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Hello. So we're Alan. 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 Uh, that's me. It's Don and Mike. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, dude, don't yell at Wendell about that. Hi, about, about, yeah, you're on the air. Don't, thanks, don't, thanks for telling me, Don. <laughs> that's great. Wow. Listen, don't yell at Wendell about that thing on Friday, man. It wasn't his fault. It would never have happened if someone at this station had not, not allowed one of our two engineers to go be the engineer for the sports junkies remote. Doesn't WHFS have their own set of engineers? Yeah, but, you know, the, uh, nobody yelled at Wendell. I, I just wanted to find out how the problem occurred, period. The problem occurred because Wendell had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go engineer a remote for a radio show that no longer works at the radio station he works at. The other engineer was at a wedding, so there was no engineer here. Not Wendell's fault, not Mike's fault, Mike Friedman. Whose fault then? Wendell's coming in now. Right. Let me clear something up. Yeah. I never, I, it was never my perception that Alan was yelling at me. He just wanted it explained. And so in going through the timeline of what happened when, you know, it's not, not only is it not eight minutes, it's not even five minutes that there was a problem there. And whether there was somebody here or not, I'm not sure how we could have fixed that faster than we actually did. And, and listen, let me tell you something. And maybe this is all too inside. It's very inside, but it's I think uh, Wendell, Alan, Wendell brings enough tension into the situation to actually make it, I think, interesting for the listeners. Maybe. Well, can, I'm not can sure. I, can I interject, Wendell? You may want to tell him because he'll, he'll get a kick out of it. What happened when you sent me that email? Oh, yeah, this was funny. Oh, I heard about this. Did you do, did you do that on purpose? No. <laughs> that Wendell sent Alan an email, a return to Alan's email, and Alan can't close it, and it keeps reopening, 
And it's, yeah, he and got like 70 copies. It, re- wow. it replicates itself. Oh, and my Alan, God. Alan over, thinks... You didn't do that on purpose, Wendell? No. Alan thinks by tomorrow morning that he might have a 1,000 copies of Wendell's email. Wow. <laughs> was it a nice email? It was 950. If, if it replicates itself as it has been, which is one email every two minutes, uh, I figured I got about 950 emails coming my way. Hey, wow. listen, Alan, here's the bottom line. Really. And I know you're pissed because I called Michael about this and I didn't call you. I don't, I don't care. No, no, no. I know you're pissed about that. I'm sorry. Who Here's the deal. When does WJFK, the radio station that you run, when does WJFK stop giving to the other stations? When do we start taking? Well, we all give to one another, Don. What have we gotten? Great question. What have we gotten? <laughs> I uh... we're getting we're getting the use of a lot of resources from a lot of different people. Like what? Like Whether like Michael, Jay Stevens, Matt, Michael, Jay, Sam Rogers. There's a bunch of. Wait, they're all losers. <laughs> nah, come they're on. They're losers. We're all winners. No, they're losers, and you know it. And I'm not including Michael in that. He's not proven himself to be a loser yet. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, listen, I want to tell you something. Is there any like furniture at any of these other stations that uh, that we might be able to steal? We get annoyed, we get abused, and we get overlooked. Who? Who's we? WJFK. Come on, come on. Because all we do is sit here and quietly win, 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 win. Let me quote Sam Rogers. Let me quote Sam Rogers, the general manager of our sister station WHFS. WJFK has an embarrassment of riches. No, nah, that didn't come from Sam. Well, it came from one of you Infinity guys. No, nah, no, nah, nah. it came from somebody who's no longer with the company. That's like somebody going up to George Steinbrenner and saying, man, it's just not fair the Yankees have so many good players. So the sports junkies left, and we like the junkies. More power to them. Good luck at morning drive on HFS. We hope Ron and Fez, their replacements, do great. But what did WJFK get out of that? And why did Wendell have to go be their engineer? Well, for my part, let me say, I like doing remotes. I know you I'd have loved to have been in New Orleans, but that wasn't in the cards. For the third time. <laughs> but <laughs> Wendell works... Wait, wait, Wendell, you get your little thing in here. Wendell right. works for WJFK. And does a great job. Right. Even if Wendell likes doing remotes, the point is he works here. He doesn't work there. Why couldn't the Junks have gotten a WHFS engineer to do their remote? Because they were busy with PGC's uh, summer jam. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So it's everybody going around to everybody else. Circles. And furthermore, as long as we're on the topic of synergy... You know, this, we're having a meeting soon about the Redskins, Alan. Yes, we are. The fact that little Jay has decided graciously to move the meeting from Lanham to Rockville ain't good enough. The meeting should be in Virginia, where the station that pays, I won't tell you how many millions of dollars a year for the show, for, for the, the Redskins, Redskins, for the rights to broadcast them. That's where the meeting should be. It's all semantics, Don. <laughs> it's all driving distance. It's semantics. I mean, honestly, Rockville is pretty equidistant. When does our radio station, WJFK, get something back from the synergy that we're giving to the other stations in our cluster? When? Uh, listen, I, I'm assuming it's rhetorical, so... No, 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 no I, that's specific. Can you tell me, are we getting... Well, here's one for you. When there's the meeting for the WHFS Festival, why don't they have that meeting here <laughs> at WJFK? <laughs> In Virginia. Well, they wouldn't have it in Virginia because the event is run by a station in Maryland. See, that's not synergy. 
I, honestly, I don't think it all matters all that much where the meeting is. I really don't. Well, it, Alan, I see, really don't. I mean, this I, is why you're not in tap. I am touching my 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 wrist right now. Is that a false fault. reference right there? You have no idea what your staff thinks. Your staff doesn't want to have a Washington Redskins meeting anywhere except this building. Uh, and, and I know that already. I've had that discussion with the individuals who feel that way. We don't want, and I'm speaking for Mike, myself, Charlie, Buzz, everybody, we don't want one of our engineers, Wendell, a guy who we know, we like, we trust, and is a good engineer, to think that we had a technical problem, even if it was for eight minutes, and it wasn't fixed, because you had loaned Wendell out to another one of our radio stations. Let them find their own engineers. They should have them, don't they? No, no, they were going to the other station. Mm -hmm. We already established that. So listen, I told Charlie on Friday night, I believe that we should have had somebody in place somewhere to watch a remote outside the building. When can we loan out our general manager? <laughs> uh, hey, listen, thank you. Just tell me where to go. <laughs> ARW. <laughs> ARW. W A R W. Go to W A R W. It's closer to where you live. <laughs> you, you want me to stay there? At W A R W? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alan, it just doesn't make sense. Listen, this all started because you're busting balls with Wendell. Once again, I really, he I, really wasn't busting my balls. He just wanted to know. Well, who was busting whose balls? I, well, I mean, they, let's not beat around the bush. I just wanted an explanation, correct, Wendell? I needed yeah. to know what happened and why. And I took on Friday's show that it was my balls being busted for not being here to cover you guys while you're on the roof. Why? I mean, why would you make that decision? We were, we were, we, if, if anything, I can play you the tape. You know what? No, let me tell you. You can play us the tape. You have always done this, Wendell. You think that we're attacking you. We value your service here. We have always said that, and we've said that a hell of a lot more than we've said negative things. We value what you do. Our position was that, hey, you know, you're our guy. You're our engineer, we'd and like you're over you, there. We'd like you covering our ass. And now, you misinterpreted mind. it as something that, hey, we thought you were hanging us out to dry. It was never anything of the kind. It was that whole idea that we've just explained about our guys going over there. But you know what? We're easier targets. That's the way I look at it. And I hate it when that happens, too. You know, and uh, more power to the junks. We wish them nothing but good luck. But really, no offense, I hope they don't, don't take offense. Find your own engineer from WHFS to engineer your show. And maybe they didn't even have anything to do with the fact that you were the engineer. They probably had nothing to do with it, too. I mean, I, I, I just, I think that's, you know, we... All I know is somebody in this chain has a weak spine. We like to have our people that, that have, you know, that we've worked with associated with us. It's the way we like it. I guess that's not in the spirit of synergy. No, because synergy means take from WJFK and give to everybody else. You know, like I said in those meetings, and I'll say it publicly, why are we even having a, a Redskins meeting with the other radio stations this company owns? We're the station that pays... I, I, I can't tell you how much a year... For the rights. Thank you. We're the station that pays an ungodly amount for the rights. Why are you even having a meeting? And why did Jay Stevens call a meeting about the Redskins? Who is he? What does Jay Stevens have to do with Redskins broadcasts on WJFK? Hello? Uh, again, I thought it was rhetorical. No, it's a direct question. Jay's very helpful. I don't know why you're all over Jay. When did Jay become very helpful? 
when he got more involved in what we're doing as a group. But why did he call the meeting about the Redskins? Why Why shouldn't he, based on the conversations we've had in the past? I don't see a problem with that. I, I think we're getting too inside here. And there are lots of pauses, and I feel I hear radios turning off all over. All right, please. All right. Honestly, this is getting real boring, I think. I'll just, no, no, no. No, I, I'll just tell our listeners that what you got here is a guy right here who uh, I like very much. But I'm, yes, I'm very it's mutual, and, I, and I'm sorry that the I'm not talking about you. One, I'm talking about him, oh. Alan. All right, I'll be over there. I, right. I, I'm afraid. Look that, at me when I'm afraid that he may be. He, what's the procedure when you um, deball somebody? Yes. Neutered or yeah, neutered. Yeah, you know, Alan. That's like, why don't I call the meeting for the WHFS festival? Don, Jay is. The VP of programming for the market. Why wouldn't he call that meeting? It's a joke position. Why didn't he call it last year? Well, because he wasn't in the same position last yes, year. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yeah. Well, maybe we weren't working as closely together then as we are now. I don't see a problem with it. I do. I don't like him. <laughs> you know, I, I can't, you know, I can't speak to that. I can only speak to what you're asking me, and I don't think there's a problem with him having a meeting based upon us working together with the other stations. We've got a great product in the Redskins. and We've well, got a great product that you're paying millions of dollars for, right. and you're giving it away to the other stations in the chain. I, I, don't, I don't see it that way. What do we get back? What do we get out of it? I believe we're going to have some opportunities to do some things across a lot of stations to make that money back. Jesus. Listen. But, you know, you... F you. Thanks, Wendell. Once again, uh, sorry about this. It's all right. This is all so inside. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know that Mike uh, quit. I had, I had no idea. Nobody Mike told me. No, 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 nobody there. effing told me that. When did, oh. that, when did that happen? On Friday? Uh, Where did happen? Wendell on Friday? When did he quit? I actually found out last uh, Tuesday before last, or last Tuesday. I don't know. I just so it had nothing to do with the Friday thing? No, it had nothing no, to do with No, it was long time. before that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Long if, if, that. if my understanding is correct, it was uh, we got a break. October that it is. Okay. You, know, just you know what? We so carefully planned this today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Sorry, Buzz. It's all right. No, don't no, worry it's about okay. it. It's okay. fine. I, don't, I mean, I, I, I don't think we drove him out of here, and I and I resent I resent that in your balls. Okay. Him. All right. Good. But I'm sensitive about that. If I have my timeline you know? right, it was right about the time of the color prayer thing. Right. No. No. Okay. We got a break. We got a break. I don't mind pulling back the curtain. Mm. This is one effed up operation. They talk about synergy. Well, he's a good guy. I'm going to miss him, I, and that, that sucks. Who, Mike they, Friedman? Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I like Mike. He was a good guy. He was a real good, guy, good guy, just like Dan Rison, mm -hmm. and, you know. <laughs> the plans he's got are, are way better for him. And... Okay. All right. Well, then, then that's, that's the truth. That's a break. Then that's you, Wendell. That's a break. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back. But you'll play the game tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. You better be funny. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be back for like a one-minute break. Right. Do you know how hard Rob and I worked? We did. To make it so when we got to... You guys were going over your we little uh, color-coded thing. And I take responsibility. I'm sorry. I, I got nuts because I'm sleep-deprived. Yes, I, I, I knew. But it's, hey, it's this fine. Thing with it's Alan, over. It's you know, over. Jay and... He didn't have the job last year. Well, yes, he did. Well, uh, maybe he wasn't as involved. We're, we're going along now. Maybe I'm just afraid to stand up for myself because I'm just the acting general manager. That's what you see. Keep getting walked on, Alan. Just keep getting walked on. Next set of footprints are mine. And you're back. Well, Mike. Yes, Don. We'll be right back. I'm tired. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. God damn it. The Don and Mike Show. 
Right, right. Hi. 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 Uh, you see, just to recap very briefly, yes, good. what that all was about was the fact that we're a radio station that has two engineers. Mm-hmm. One of them was at a wedding. Okay. Pre-arranged. That happens. We, the Donna Mike show, we were down in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Our engineer, who should have been covering our ass here to make sure nothing went wrong technically, was being loaned to one of our sister stations so that the other disc jockeys, the junkies, mm-hmm. could have an engineer for their remote. Right. You know. So we just made a little noise about it, and then uh, you know, that was not the reason that the other engineer has quit, as, as was established to us. No. I mean, they're just window busting our balls. Right. But really, I don't like Jay Stevens. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's the corporate vice president? Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, would you like a booster chair, Jay? <laughs> For the next meeting? Just stay the F out of WJFK. Just stay the F out of this radio station. Please. Go play with the other ones. <laughs> You know, <laughs> he made a sandbox comment a while back. Yeah, stay out of our sandbox. <laughs> anyway, hi, Buzz. Hi, Don. Mike, this just in: comedian Rodney Dangerfield is at this very moment having brain surgery in Los Angeles to try to increase his blood flow because he's been having heart problems. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, not blood flow. Blood flow in my brain. And finally, and you're going to like this, sure, Geraldo has apologized for revealing U.S. troop movements in Iraq. Of course, that doesn't make the troops feel any better, but I can tell you what does. And I apologize for... What? <laughs> nothing. Yeah, nothing. There you go. There, that's right. I can, just hear it. I can tell you what Geraldo, uh, what makes the troops feel better about Geraldo. A very reliable source says that in the days after Geraldo's screw-up, but before he was tossed out of Iraq by the Pentagon, some soldiers got their revenge on the reporter. They pretended to be glad to meet Geraldo. They gave him hearty handshakes after they'd put their hands down their pants <laughs> in the bad place. <laughs> I'm Buzz Burbank wow. on the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. Thank you, Buzz. No! All right, that's it. We oh, The door only half open. We're not going yet. We're halfway out. We gotta go. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Uh, good day to you, sir. 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 <laughs> hey, Linus. Good friend. Am I on the air? Ah! Hey, pal. Hi, pal. DM. Peter. K. Till we meet again, this is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.